And we are live. What is going on, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Welcome to the first stream of the month of March. Why does the music seem extra loud today? I'm going to let me drop it just a hair here. Um, you know what? I was probably watching. Let's see. I don't think this. I don't think me adjusting this. Let me know if the audio or it, let me know if the music gets quieter for you guys. I think that only adjusts my output, but it might affect input. That was loud. I think I was watching a video on here using the speakers, which is why. So anyways, what's going on, everyone? Who's all here today? We've got Hobo Banana. We've got Alien Ditto, RS Makes, uh, Trevor, Bardicus, TJ, Man of the Croc, Del Mars here, Tours in the House, Jack, Sven. Hey, Keith, how's it going? Luke's here. How's everybody's day going? I, I wanted to take a minute. Hey, Dominic. Hey, Tucker. I want to take a moment to really quickly recap the Ender Wire stream series. So we're going to be doing a follow-up stream, not next week, not the following week, but the following week. Um, just sort of hanging out and taking a look at it. Um, after last week's stream, for anyone that was here, uh, you already know what happened. For anyone that wasn't here, basically things were going well, and then we got to flashing the Compute Module 4 and nothing. I could not get it to show up on the network. I couldn't get it to seemingly boot, plugs into the E3 Easy. I spent, I think, an hour plus on stream. I spent probably two hours after on my own time. Then I came back the next day and spent more time and eventually just gave up for now. Um, I went as far as bringing a monitor, an extra monitor up here to plug in uh, with the mouse and keyboard to the E3 EZ to see if I could see anything as far as it trying to boot and I couldn't. So I still don't know whether it's the CM4, whether it's the E3 EZ, I have no idea. Um, what I'm gonna end up doing is ordering probably a, um, either a, I think Waveshare makes one, I know Big Tree Tech does, where you can plug in, it's basically like a Pi shell uh, that you can plug a CM4 into. So I need to see what the heck it is. I'm pretty sure it's something with the E3 EZ board, but I went back to a CB1 and it's working fantastic. So um, yeah, that's that. The only other things I've done so far are the bed front to back was having a range of 0 0.9, 0 0.9 of a millimeter, uh, which was not great. I played around with loosening and tightening things a bit. Um, Steve made the recommendation of making sure the Y cable chain was parallel which it was not, that corrected like 0.05 of a millimeter. So I actually just ended up taking two 0.7 millimeter shims, shimming the back of the bed, and now my range is down to 0.24. So um, ideally I'd rather not shim, but for the sake of this, since it's an Ender 3 bed without any silicone adjustment or spring adjustment, I'm happy with it. So um, I, I printed a tiny little test print and now I'm just sort of cleaning up things. So. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to update everyone that I still don't know what the heck the deal is with those CM4s and I, I have a hard time believing that two Raspberry Pi boards are just bad or DOA. I've never had an issue with them. I think it's the E3 EZ board and something with power or a jumper or I, I really don't know. Um, let's see. So that's, that's what's going on with that. Uh, Sam, thank you for eight months. Let's see. Wait, we got some, got some cool sounds here. Let's do a Dugan for you. <clears throat> uh, hey Nuno, hey Trevor, just finished my V0.2. Nice, congratulations. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, Simon, hey Simon. I've seen the CM4 can be a pain to set up. Got a big tree tech pie adapter. I had one at one point. I don't know where the heck it is. I looked for it and the only thing I could find was the, like the big tree tech pie replacement. It looks like a Raspberry Pi, but it's running their own chip. I can't find the adapter. So we'll see if it, Whenever I discover what the heck it is, if I can discover what it is, um, I'll let you know. Like, if I if I get an adapter for the CM4 and it still doesn't work, I'm going to rule it as being probably the CM4. Um, but I have a feeling I'll plug it in, it's going to work, and it's going to be something to do with, again, with the E3 EZ. But I went through documentation, every video, every GitHub bug, every uh, Discord. I, I couldn't find anything that that exactly replicated the issue that I was having. So... Uh, it's not, an, I wish it was an EMMC CM4, it's not. It's a non-EMMC, so it's micro SD card. I did see some people, the only people I saw getting the E3EZ board working with the CM4 um, were all using EMMC variants. So I'm almost tempted to order an EMMC variant just to see if that works. I don't know. <laughs> um, it's charming. 
Oh, it's supposed to be sweet ham, as in the cured meat I put. <laughs> Perfect. Sweet ham. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, what issue? It just doesn't boot, you know? So, like, we took the E3 Easy board, put the CM4 on there, powered the board over 24 volts, which then powers that slot. And I flashed a micro SD card with the main sale image and nothing showed up on the network. I took the micro SD card out, plugged it into a regular Pi and it booted right up. So the micro SD card was good, but I went as far as swapping CM4s uh, to a different version, swapping micro SD cards, trying different images, playing with all the jumpers. Like I, uh, I even tried powering it over USB to see if maybe there was some issue with the 24 volt rail going into it. Like I, I tried everything I could think of Trust me, I don't know what the hell the issue is. So anyways, uh, today we are going to hopefully have a, a look at a laid back stream compared to some of the recent troubleshooting. This is the not one, but two trees. Uh, not a great joke. SK1, this was sent to me by two trees. Basically, they said, hey, we want you to check out this printer. And I said, cool, I'll open it up on stream and we'll take a look at it. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, as far as some of the details on it, for anybody interested, let's take a quick look at that before we actually dive in. Let me get out of the sound effects here. Okay, so it is a Core XY 3D printer running Clipper firmware, um, currently going for $4.99. They did provide me with a $50 coupon in the description down below. It is an affiliate link. I am not giving this printer my thumbs up or seal of approval. I have no experience with it, but if anyone watches this later on and decides they do want to get it and wants to support the channel, you're welcome to. I just want to make it clear that I don't know any, or I don't know much about this printer yet, so it's not me condoning it, but they did provide the coupon, so um, that is down there. So yeah, it's it's $499 retail. It's running Clipper. I believe it has, I believe it has independent Z motors, so it actually trams the bed, which is not something I've seen really on any of these sort of desktop budget Core XY 3D printers. That's not what I wanted to do. Raid Shadow Legends. So yeah, 256 by 256 by 256 build volume. Uh, Z-Tilt leveling claims ridiculous 700 millimeters per second printing speed, which I am calling BS on. <laughs> I don't believe it. Hey, Benny. Um, yeah, I think it's something with the E3 Easy. I had an M8P that came with a dead USB voltage regulator, which would not allow the CM4 or CB1 to boot when attached. The CB1 works fine though, Alien, which I don't understand. Like I, I plugged back the CB1 and reflashed the latest image, booted right up first try, which is odd to me. If neither of them worked, then it, I would, it would help me sort of narrow it down. Ordering my first printer this week stuck between the S1 Pro and the Sidewinder X4 Pro. S1 Pro, what, why can't I think of what is the S1 Pro? I haven't, I haven't tested out or seen the new Sidewinder. I haven't played around with Sidewinder in years, actually. I have a CM4 Lite working with an E3EZ. It's non-EMMC. Okay, so you do have it working. I, if there's anything weird that you had to do to get it working, please share in the Discord because I don't know what else it could be. I've tried multiple images. Are you using Mainsail OS or, or are you using uh, Fluid OS? Uh, have you tried plugging the CM4 module into something else to see? I haven't. I don't have anything else to plug it into yet other than a Manta M8P on one of my other printers. And I just didn't want to pull the CB1 out of it right now. So it's a P1P clone in a sense. I mean, it's a Core XY 3D printer with a same form factor. Um, I, I mean, I think that everybody out there, not everybody, most everybody out there in the budget Core XY space is sort of mirroring what Bamboo has done or trying to. Um, but yeah, the size is without a doubt. <laughs> so I'm curious to see, uh, X4 has a thick Y rail. <clears throat> I like the old Sidewinder. I mean, uh, Del Mar has got one that's all souped up. I really like the old Sidewinder. Even stock, I, I didn't do a whole lot to that printer, but it did a fantastic job of printing with all sorts of filaments, including TPUs. I think all I might've done was upgrade the, the heat break to an all metal from the PTFE. So. All metal hot end, linear motion guides. I mean, I don't know what else we really want to see on here. I think we'll just crack it open and take a look at it. That looks very much like a clone of Bamboo's hot end, which is also what uh, Chidi's been using. That looks like a, to me that looks similar to like an LGX type uh, gear set, which wouldn't surprise me because that seems to be also what the Sorry, current, current meta is of, <laughs> of these printers. So let's see, I'm optimistic. I, 
I haven't heard a whole lot about this printer. Um, I've heard a few small things here and there, um, but neither leaning towards it being like bad or good, just sort of a printer. So we'll see what it's all about. We're gonna be doing a couple of these sort of printer unboxing streams. We have another one coming up in two weeks on the ComGrow T300. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, so these will be kind of sprinkled into the builds. Uh, why would you consider an S1 over the next V3 Enders? Oh, the Ender 3 S1. So like the one using the Sprite extruder, that's what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I did test out the S1 and I didn't think it was a bad printer at all, but I also agree that I haven't, that was probably a year, it was probably a year, year and a half ago now. And they've had so many different revisions. I don't think that's the one I'd be looking at unless, unless you're getting just a really good deal on it. Because I will say that I, I thought the Sprite extruder was fairly solid. I didn't really have issues with it. Okay. I'm going to drop this. Let's go. Let's really quick go like this. I'm going to drop this down so I can lift it out. <laughs> Oh, lift with your knees. Okay. One. Uh, why are we sticking? I might need to tilt this. Oh. Let's do the shimmy, shimmy it out. There we go. Okay, now I can lift it. Drop the box and place it. It's definitely got some heft to it. Okay. Move this out of the way. Hey, Matthew. Hey, Munge. Ivan has a fleet of them. The Ender 3 S1s. Or you mean, you mean, I'm sorry. You mean the Sidewinders, right? I'm sure that's what you're talking about. Okay, let's take a First look at this guy. Let me bring the camera down so you guys can see. I know the lighting is kind of having the backlit windows not, or not backlit window, but having light shining through is not ideal. So I can close these a little bit. <clears throat> okay, let's lift this off. So yeah, linear rails on X, linear rails on Y, and then Z. Is it only, that's weird. Huh, let me show you guys this, I, unless I'm mistaken. It looks like Z has three lead screws, but only two rails. So the back is kind of a floating setup. <clears throat> oh, here's our screen. I've been in a fleet of Sinoder X1. I mean, it's pretty cheap now. Yeah, the Sidewinder X1, for its time, at least, even the stock extruder, it was basically like, a, if I remember, a Titan, Titan or Titan Arrow clone, um, which worked pretty dang well compared to what a lot of, I think it was the, was the MK8 or MK10 extruders that most other manufacturers were using. Okay, so let's do, I don't have, unfortunately, um, I don't have an overhead cam, so it's going to be a lot of me bringing you guys around with this guy. The overhead's not set up because I'm still trying to figure things out. So, well, um, I'm bringing you guys up higher. That's as high as you can go. I might have to swap you guys out to a different tripod. Um, for now, we'll just try to make this work. So, a few things. <clears throat> see if we can see inside of here. Nope. Okay, so yeah, we've got our, our X rail, which is linear rail, again, mounted on top. We've got dual, of course, dual Y rails, linear rail left, linear rail on the opposite side. But the thing that's interesting, the first thing I'm just seeing again that's interesting is we've got our Z <clears throat> and we've got our lead screw. This is a super thin, this is a very, that's a very thin bracket. Um, I don't know how well you guys can see that. That's a super thin bracket up there. I wish that was a bit beefier. I mean, it's, it's really, I guess the lead scoop could probably be floating. It's just a kind of loose fit bearing. So there's a little, little bit of play for the lead screw instead of completely um, compressing it. But the, you, you got lead screw, you got linear rail. And then if I move you around to this side, 
once again, we've got the same thing, which is lead screw and linear rail, but the back is just floating. Um, so the back does have a lead screw, uh, but there is no, let me see if I go like this. There is no linear rail. It is just screw, which is interesting. I, I certainly haven't seen that before. Um, I I have no idea how that will or will not impact the bed. I assume <laughs> there's a reason why the Trident and every printer I've really seen has at least three, well, I guess you know all, but like if they all have, if they have their own motor, they have either typically a linear rail or a linear rod supporting it as well. So maybe it's not needed, but I'm curious to just see sort of how that does or does not affect things. Uh, it looks like it would be okay as long as the lead screws are straight. Yeah, it's it's probably fine. Um, but I, like, if someone asked me, like, would you take the third linear rail or don't take the third linear rail? I, I would probably say I'm going to uh, I'm going to take the third linear rail. I think. Does it have a thing for Z wobble on that screw? Um, negative. So these are. <clears throat> So this is what we've got here. We've got, oops, I'm sorry. Again, it's gonna be a little bit of mismatch. So all of them are rocking um, stiff couplers or rigid couplers. So there's no, they're not spider couplers. They're not flex shaft, they're stiff. And they all have the same uh, nut, lead screw nut, which looks like it's, it looks like it's a, um, oh God, not PTFE, what's it called? It's a uh, palm, it looks like a palm nut and they've all got anti-backlash springs. Um, but I don't see, I don't see any pivot point. Like they're all, that's rigid mounted to an L bracket. That's rigid mounted to an L bracket. And this guy is rigid mounted to the plate. So no, I don't see any pivoting, which makes me think that the two rails should constrain it pretty well. Um, yeah, so I would think I would think that's going to mean that it's going to have very, a very small range that it can correct. Uh, it looks like there are actually, no, what is this? Yeah, it looks rigid mounted to me. I don't see it's got, it's got like, um, spacers or, or washers underneath the bed that look kind of like, they don't look like silicone to me. They're harder. I don't know if they're rubber or, or what they are. These sort of these little standoffs. Uh, if it gets at a level, it's probably going to bind up pretty quickly. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think that there's only, I mean, I, let me just for fun mess with it. Yeah, I can, I mean, I can feel it. So <laughs> it locks up, right? This is about as far as I can get it, but I'm curious to see if it would even be able to correct, if it would even be able to correct for this. Um, so this is like max, max that you can get it, uh, which is still decent. I mean, that's not. It's probably enough that for most situations, unless something really funky happens, but I mean, you could always just sort of hand correct it. And really, I mean, typically the range you're trying to tram the bed is fairly minimal, unless something weird's going on. But uh, interesting, interesting choice. So they rigid mounted it. Most of them have some sort of adjustment. I mean, Nozzle would probably just smash the bed at that angle. Yeah. So that's what's going on there. <clears throat> I didn't realize again that it was, um, I didn't realize again that it was two Y rails. That's sort of interesting. Uh, the AB motors look beefy. Uh, let's see if you guys can see these back here. These, these are chonky. Oh, that's not what I want to do. Sorry, everybody. Boxheimer had some strange artifacts with his prints. Okay, yeah, it'll be interesting to see How tall are these motors? 60 millimeter. So 60 millimeter tall. And they're, they're NEMA, I think they're just NEMA 17s, 40 millimeter, right? Yeah. Those are, those are definitely tall, very, very tall steppers. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else interesting down here. <clears throat> I sort of want to take off the, take off the tool head cover and see sort of what's in there. It looks like from the very bottom, oops, that's not what we want to do. 
From the very bottom, it looks like it's got an inductive probe. Let's see if you guys can see it. Mm. Let me turn the angle. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, that looks like an inductive probe to me in the back. I definitely see that's what it is. So it's not using load cell, um, which is probably okay. I don't know. I don't know if there is an enclosure kit upgrade for this. I certainly haven't heard of it, but I don't. I don't love inductive probes. Um, I certainly don't love them inside of an enclosed printer if you're printing really hot. But for this guy. Being open, I, I don't think it's an issue as long as it performs well. Uh, it's like someone saw a Trident rat rig and decided to copy it just to understand how to actually assemble and why. Now, <clears throat> yeah, I haven't used the Two Trees printer since the Two Trees Sapphire or Sapphire Pro, which was <laughs> which was a long time ago. I think I think we looked at the YouTube video I did on it. And it was like four plus years. Uh, so let's see, we've got, looks like just a thumb screw. Let's see what happens. Oh, this is, okay, so no, this is not thumb screw. This must be, okay, that's kind of cool. This looks like the extruder tension screw. Um, and I'm not, I'm not upset that that's external like this. It's really easy to adjust. So if you're printing with different materials and you just slightly t um, tighten it or lower it, it's kind of nice that it's sticking out like that. It looks like there's just a couple of Phillips head screws, uh, two on the right and on the left holding this cover on so let me see if i remove the extruder tensioner maybe that's not I'm sure as hell looks like a tensioner let's see if i've got something to unscrew these um got a flathead uh is that a five volt probe i i don't know i don't know if it's five volts it doesn't look like a probe i've seen before Okay, one screw is off. I'm actually not. I'm hoping that's a tension screw. It, it, I was expecting a spring, but we'll see what the inside of this looks like. Adjustable. Looks like the probe off my Sidewinder. Adjustable end stop? Oh, you think that, that guy that I just took out, you think that's what it was? Is it? Um... I'm not sure what, oh, also there's a couple of screws up top here. I need to remove There's printed parts uh, that basically hold this guy in place, um, which we should probably remove, but I can't tell, is it sensorless? It kind of looks like it's sensorless homing. I don't see any physical limit switches, so we'll see how that plays out. Okay, so yeah, those screws are definitely what's holding this cover on. These are super small screws. Hey, Jose! Not even the first print done, you're already taken apart. <laughs> I figured this is what we're, I mean, this is what we're here for, right? Like I, I want to print with it. I'm not going to like mod anything on it, but let's at least just see what the guts are like before we, um, let's see, can I release this? How do you do this? Um, interesting. So there's a clip, there's a, like a thumb clip on this PTFE tube that you can't really access. Let me pop it off like that and then push on you. There we go. There we go. Okay. Under the hood. So uh, it looks exactly like I was expecting it to look based off of the renders on on their uh, on their product page. So oops, let me go a little bit closer here. So this looks a lot like a bamboo hot end. I mean, down to its positioning, uh, the geometry of it. It's mounted differently. Um, but yeah, this looks, I mean, let's take this guy off. This looks, let's try not to break it. We don't have spares. That looks real, real similar to a bamboo, bamboo style hot end, which seems to have become popular. I mean, Chidi is running it as well. I don't think Creality has copied it yet, um, but I know that I think Zombie has been running the, the Triangle Labs Ace uh, hot end, and I think they're using something quite similar as well. Is the nozzle removable? It, 
I don't want to try to loosen it out of fear that I might damage it. So my answer for right now is I don't know. It is a hardened steel nozzle. Uh, it's black, so it's, it's definitely a hardened steel nozzle, which is nice. The thing I'm kind of curious about is whether it's just a standard nozzle or if it's sort of a um, uh, CHT clone where it's got kind of that split split internal geometry, but I, I don't know. But yeah, it looks, I mean, from the outside, the heat sink's slightly different. Like, let me turn this around. For anyone that's, uh, for anyone that's pretty familiar with bamboo's heat sinks, you'll see that it's slightly different, um, but just, just a little. Like, let's see, focus a little bit more. There's some, there's some weird, like, curvature on the inside here of the heat sink that's not on the bamboo, but I mean, really, aside from that, the clip they're using looks the same. Um, the nozzle's different, again, but it's it's damn close. Like, I, it's it's real, real close. It, it is hardened. Yep, yep. Uh, looks removable. Yeah, it is hardened, so that's cool. I mean, it's all metal and it's hardened, so those are not bad things. Let me put this back on the correct way. It looks like there's a slot for the for mister and heater wires to pass through. Nope. There we go. Okay, nozzle's back on. And then let's take a quick look at... Uh, there is also a tool head board. <sighs> do we want to see that too? I kind of think we do. <laughs> all right, let's just... Let's, all right, I got to remember how to put this thing back together at the end of it all, but let's, let's, let's do that as well. So let me... <clears throat> here. <laughs> This is probably, oops, God, why is it keep falling today? <laughs> yeah, let me just pull off the, uh... okay, add time. How long have we been streaming for? 27 minutes, I think that sounds about right. It's usually at 30 minute mark that it inserts. So let me first remove these little things that are holding in, <clears throat> they're holding in the, um, the tool head. Just a couple of like retaining screws for shipping. But yeah, let's take a look. I imagine it's probably going to be a... I imagine it's probably going to be a white-labeled version of a... Oh, gosh. I'm not Maker Gear. What's the... Why can't I think of what they're called? Uh, like the the Skipper. Um, I can't think of the manufacturer right now. Someone help me out. I've done a video on it. The, the Skipper board. That manufacturer has been doing a bunch of... <clears throat> is it, it's not Maker Gear, it's... Mm, doo -doo -doo -doo. I can't... I can't think of the company. Ultra Base. Maker Base. That's it. That's it. Maker Base. That's it. Yeah, I have a feeling... Something tells me it's going to be a Maker Base board. I could be wrong, but so far on the Clippard printers, uh, primarily, other than I think Creality is doing their own board... I think almost all of them that I've seen, I know Chidi, I know Elegoo, um, have been using Maker baseboards, like variants of the Skipper. Okay, so now we've got movement, I think. Nope, nope, blocks on this side as well. Definitely not upset that they um, secured this so well in shipping. I mean, that's nice. There's six blocks you have to remove to keep the tool head that keeps the tool head in place during shipping okay so now we should have front and back motion yep side to side cool so let's take a look at this tool head board and see if i'm right or see if i'm wrong yeah i don't i haven't really had issues with uh oh, come on i haven't really had issues with maker base uh boards i think the the only thing complaint i really had was on some of their documentation on uh on the skipper board but that's that's just i feel like that's a work in progress for every manufacturer and it can always be a bit better but they were very receptive to my feedback which again is something that i'm i i do take that into account because i've just i've been in this space long enough to know that there's a lot of manufacturers that i talk to that just either don't care or it goes in one ear and out the other. Uh, so when a when a manufacturer, if I have a complaint, they actually say like, no, 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 you're right. We're gonna do something about it. Or like, let me talk to my engineering team. Even though sometimes, <laughs> sometimes they give me the old, let me talk to the engineering team as a way to like, 
you know, like shut me up basically. Like, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it. And then nothing ever happens or comes of it. So we'll see in some cases. Hey, PF. Uh, all two trees are maker. Oh, they are. Okay. So well, that just about answers that. But let's still take a look at what's behind here. We're already, we're already three screws out of four in. Interesting choice of using these little Phillip head screws. I, I'm not used to seeing Phillip head screws and I just feel like they're kind of easier to strip out. All right. Let's see the goods. <clears throat> Turn this around slowly. I think the best angle is probably gonna be. Hmm. Yeah, that might work. Let's get you guys kind of off to the side like that. We'll start there and see how that looks. Were you in focus? Yeah, good enough. Hey, tripods. Yeah, tripod. John, you did a video on this printer, right? And you were pretty happy with it, if I remember. Okay, am I missing a screw? Hold on, before I start. I don't see any screws down here. Don't see any screws up top. Okay, that looks clear. Is it this cable? Oh, you know what? I bet you it's this cable chain attachment point. Yeah, let's take this, let's take this off really quick. There's a there's a pretty big bolt on the very top of this for the kind of the cable chain attaches to, and something tells me that's the final thing that's holding this in place. Okay, that's off. Yeah, I had a really good experience with it. I'm pretty happy about it. Cool, yeah, that's awesome. There we go. Fairly clean wiring. Um, there's another a fan too, that's kind of cool. So we've got a fan. I didn't even look at, what's our cooling? Is that, wait, 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 wait. Is that our cooling? No. Okay, so for cooling, there's a 5015 blower in here. That's our cooling. So there's three fans in the tool head. 5015 for actual layer cooling. It looks like um, that's not a that's not a 3010. That's a 2010, two 2010s. Uh, one for the heat sink, and then one right here for cooling. It looks like this canvas board. And so we've got our four pin four pin canvas right here. Uh, there is one open header. I don't know. It says S and G signal ground X. Okay. So that's X. It looks like it's an end stop. Uh, yeah. So Z minus. So Z end stop, X end stop. I can't tell what that is, but it looks like they've got their miss. No, what is that? That is MT. MT. What is MT? Uh, mm, I don't know what MT is. That's a really, uh, that's about actually, I just, the, the, these, these screw down terminals are really small for the, let me see if I can zoom in. The only complaint I have are the screen not showing much information. The fans are always on and uh, material, uh, MT material, it, could it could be i don't know if there's a scent is there a filament sensor it's impossible to tell oh no there is there's a filament sensor yeah, yeah yeah no no no. that's probably what it is material something yeah no that's exactly what it is it's a filament sensor why does this look bad i hope it's not the um i don't think it is i think it's just perspective one second i should put this Back on. There we go. Yeah, I think it's the silicone sock. It made the, the hot end look bent. So yeah, there is actually a filament runout sensor. It's in line with the extruder. So right above the extruder, I can't tell. I have a feeling it's just your typical, you know, kind of limit switch that it's either on or off state. But there is that, which isn't a bad thing. Um, it looks like it's an RP20. I see Raspberry Pi logo. So it looks like an RP20 base board. I mean, that's real. I mean, there's not a whole lot of additional stuff. There's some extra slack on here, um, but overall, I'm not a, I'm not upset with what I'm seeing. It's definitely not bad looking. Yeah, it's a it's a clean can board. I I mean, 
my cam board doesn't look any better than that. I just hid my wires a bit differently. So yeah, nothing, nothing shocking or, or, you know, concerning up there. So very nice. Let's see if I can get this back on now. Go. Like so. I think this just goes around like that, hopefully. I don't know where this... <clears throat> yeah, that'll be fine. Okay, so let me put these screws back in really quick here. I think that was worth taking a look at. It's the kind of stuff that I find... It's the kind of stuff that I find interesting. Um, so... Hey, Puma! Darn voice to text driving home from work in Chicago. <laughs> Maker base labels, the run-out sensor is MT debt on some boards. Okay, that's gotta be what it is in material material detection. Yeah, it was definitely one second here. Let me focus on this. Oh no! <laughs> I know I'm gonna I'm gonna lose a screw. These screws are so small. All right, let me <laughs> let me get super focused here. This little, this little flathead that I'm using too is not the best probably for this, but I don't, I don't know where I've got a, a Phillip head small enough for this guy. I might have to find something else. Uh, bear with me. Let me see if I can find a small screwdriver because this thing sucks. Mm -mm -mm. Ah, this might work a little better on a tiny little... Yep. Oh, nope. God. I wish they'd use slightly bigger screws. These are very, very small. I think they're M2, M2 thread. Why are we not tightening at all? What is going on? Okay, one down, seven to go. Okay. They do supply extra flip screws. I love <laughs> Thank goodness. All right. Yeah, that's at least they do that then because I'm like, there's just no way. These are so small that any time I, I could. <laughs> I know it's not just me. It's part of the part of the equation is definitely that it's me, but it's not just me. Okay, we got two in, six to go. We'll go back to this this angle. I'm still my arms. Hey, what's up, Nexus? Hey, William. The heatsink fan is always on by default. Interesting. Is it hooked up to something like a controllable? I would imagine it's hooked up to something that you can, like an addressable port. What do you think about the Chidi X plus three? I did a whole video on it. I can't really summarize. Oh, come on. I can't really summarize the printer uh, better than I did in that video, but I think it's okay. There's definitely some things on that printer that I'm like, yeah, that's great. But then there's other things on that printer There's other things on that printer that definitely make me scratch my head as to why certain decisions were made. Great. Are we stripping? What's going on here? Cross threading. The board has the headers for the temp controlled fan, but they aren't used. Interesting. It's CAN bus, so for sure it's controllable. Yeah, I have a feeling it's gonna it's gonna be okay. Let's try this top one. Okay, this one was easier. Okay, let's see if we can get this bottom one. It looks like it's lined up perfectly, so I don't know. 
I don't know if there's just some plastic that got into the into the threads. Oh man. Stripping. <laughs> it's just a it's just a regular regular occurrence here. Cream stripping. Okay. Come on. You are perfectly lined up. Alright. We are at the halfway point of getting this thing back together. Cool. The belts seem really tensioned. I, I'm not going to adjust them, but I wonder if they're a little over tensioned. Okay, so there's that. Let's put our um, cable chain back on. Oh man, mustache nose. Mustache tickling nose. It's like when marketing a stainless steel truck, but bending the metal during fabrication turned into a magnet. I've heard a lot of good stuff about it. Thinking of buying it, you recommend something else. Oh, you're talking about uh, this is the Chitty Max. It depends on what your needs or your use cases. And also like they've, they've changed the printer since I've used it. Like they, I, I believe they went away with the embedded magnets and they're now using a magnetic sheet. Um, and I think that they're also using one of my biggest complaints was that it was using a BL touch and I don't like BL touches really. Like I get that they're fine in some instances, but an enclosed printer with a, with a heater, like that's just not the probe I'm using or the bed leveling setup. So I believe since then they're not using that at all anymore and they're using an inductive probe and that things have gotten better. So it's hard for me to say for sure whether you should or shouldn't, it, it depends. Like, do you need a printer that size? Is that why you're getting it? Like, what, what are your reasonings? What are your reasonings for getting that over something else? I suppose, you know? Hey, Big Red, I do like the Z-Tilt oh, on, on, on this guy. Yeah, Z tilt's cool. I just find it weird. A couple things. One, there's no linear rail on the back. It's just a floating lead screw. And two, uh, there's not really any adjustment points. Like usually, like the um, Trident has sort of these like pivoting ball bearings, and I guess they're not ball bearings. Like it's like a pivoting ball bearing with a thread, and then the uh... <sighs> what's the other one I'm thinking of? The Mercury 1.1 uses small linear rails with adjusting also, I think ball pivoting heads. So it's just, it's, it's interesting that they chose to rigid mount all three corners of it. Usually there's a floating, a floating point. So yeah, spherical bearings. That's right. Yeah. That's typically what I've seen used is, is spherical bearings, but there's not, it's just rigid mounted. So I, I think it, it seems like it'll probably be okay, but you wonder why they decided not to go with with that, I guess. Okay, so let's plug. Oh, I goofed. It's gonna be interesting trying to figure out how to get the. Let's see, so if I go like this, and I go like this. Dude, this is interesting. Getting the retaining clip back in. Oh, it's not. Never mind. I'm tripping. It's not that bad. Just go like. <laughs> hold on. You go like this. Okay, we got our PTFE in. Yeah, getting the retaining clip back in kind of sucks. Um, let me see if I go from this side. <sighs> I missed the start of the stream. There wasn't a whole lot. Uh, independent, oh, independent screws, yes. So it should be independent screws. We're gonna open the bottom up, but yeah, as far as I'm aware and their advertisement, it's independent. Yeah, how the heck do you push this back on? <laughs> this retaining clip, I I mean, it's, it's <laughs> without unplugging the fan. I wonder if I can just drop it in. Let me see, maybe with some tweezers. If not, I'm probably just gonna leave the dang thing off because it's not a, it's just a reverse Bowden. Yeah, how the hell do you get this back in? Okay, that's not gonna work. Let me go for one last, one last idea here. Uh, do, 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 do. They forgot to copy those features from everyone else. Okay, we are in. Nope. I don't think I'm putting this retaining clip back in. 
unless I unplug the fan from the back, I just don't see, unless there's something I'm missing. Okay, wait, 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 I've got a straight shot. I've got a straight shot. I also, I'm using needle nose tweezers, which isn't probably what I should be using for this. Probably using some slightly wider. Yeah, I'm over it. <laughs> I'm over it. There's no retaining clip. It's a reverse bowden. and we'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. I was putting it back because it was there, but I, I'm running, I think almost every single printer that I'm running that's using a reverse bowden and doesn't have a retaining clip. So anyways, we tried our best. Let's get this thing back together. We've wasted enough time on that. Old Dremel cut. Yeah. No, it's, it shouldn't it shouldn't be needed. It's one thing if it was a Bowden setup, you definitely don't want any flex, but or any ability to back out, but in a reverse Bowden or guide tube setup. Oh, this isn't the screwdriver we're using. It shouldn't matter. There we go. That doesn't look fun. Yeah, I'm, cur I'm curious how they got it on the first time. I mean, I think it's order of operations. Like maybe you place that back in. So so maybe you do the front cover, get that back in and then do the back cover second. Like if you, the only reason why it's difficult is because you don't have enough slack from the hot and cooling fan. So if you had that unplugged, it'd be a piece of cake, but I've got the back cover on, so it's not simple. I missed start of the stream. Is there a panel set that it comes with or is it open air? It's open air. Yeah, it's open air. And I, I don't believe, I haven't heard or seen, um, tripod, you might know. I, I don't think there's a upgrade kit for enclosing this thing. I think it's, in, it's intended this specific model to be open air. I could be wrong. Actually, I could be very wrong. Uh, no. <laughs> there's, there's, there's threads on the sides. Um, yeah, I think I'm very wrong. So th th I don't think there's an upgrade path. I stand by that, but I do believe that this is probably intended to have an upgrade path or they're planning on releasing a version similar to like the P1P, P1S using the same frame that does come in close because I'm looking right now and there's threaded holes on all sides. So it's, if they don't end up releasing it, I don't think it'd be very difficult to cut some acrylic panels with holes in it to, to enclose this. So yeah, I take back what I said a moment ago about, it looks like they clearly had, oh, don't you fall, don't you fall. It looks like they clearly had a intent of letting it be enclosed or selling an upgrade kit or something. Oh, don't you dare strip on me, it's the last one. There we go. All right, we're in, we're in, we're back where we started. We've undone the chaos. Yeah, so <clears throat> if you look right, right here, there's a threaded hole. Uh, it's the same thing, same thing right there. And you've got one more on the bottom. Uh, you've also got hinge slots on the front. So yeah, this is completely wrong as far as it's not intended to be enclosed. They've, They've certainly put some thought into designing this frame. Can you guys see that? Maybe. I don't know if you guys can see that. There's there's two holes right there for hinges on top and bottom. Let's go down. That'll probably help you guys see it. It's the light behind it is sort of blocking it. But yeah, you can see it right there. Uh, right there. So. Uh, I've only taken off the front cover, never the back cover. Okay, uh, never buy ABS unless you use an enclosure or only print tiny humid. Yeah, I, I, I agree. For consistent ABS printing or it just best, for ABS printing you want an enclosure. Uh, you can get away with a tiny little part here and there. I don't know how your inner, inner layer adhesion is gonna be on the layers, but generally speaking, yes, you absolutely, if you're telling me I want a printer for ABS, you do not want an open air printer for ABS printing. 
How's the belt tensioning mechanism? That's a great question. <clears throat> um, so it looks like, uh, let me, I'm gonna tilt this guy forward because I don't have a camera to go over. So we'll bring, bring the fun to you. Um, <clears throat> so it looks like belt tensioning is done. You guys in one hand. Right there on each side has one of these guys. There's a little screw here and it looks like it pushes. Yeah. So this pushes or pulls a bearing stack. Um, so you've got one on each side. It's a fairly easy adjustment. Just it's a, again, looks like an M3, M3 screw on both sides. Um, so no real complaints with that. The, let me turn this around. <clears throat> I, I do think they did a really nice job of strain relief. So here's the cable strain relief that looks pretty damn good to me. So you've got what looks like an aluminum piece, part of the bed. Yeah, it's coming off of it and it attaches into this. So it's, I mean, it's inside of here, your wires. It's pretty nice. Just put the box over it. There you go. Why Phillips? Yeah, I don't, I know that's a strange decision to me too, Jose. The Phillips heads are, that might be the first time I've ever seen Phillips heads on a 3D printer. I could be wrong, but uh, it's definitely not the norm. And I think that they're going to be easier to strip. They'll bring out an enclosure kit for it, <clears throat> uh, but it's been delayed. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, AC bed. I'm not sure. We can check once we open electronics down below. Hey, what's up 3D experiments? How's it going? Strain relief, who needs it? <laughs> nice. Uh, I need hernia surgery to achieve. Ooh, ooh. All right, other thing before we, we're gonna crack open the bottom before we turn this thing on, but um, we've got some external ports right here. We've got an antenna, a little thread for antenna. So I imagine there's probably an antenna inside of that box. We've got ethernet, we've got USB 2.0, USB 3.0, and what are you? I don't know what that is. Um, I, I mean, it looks like a phone jack. It, oh, is it? You know what? That's got to be for the... No, it's not for the screen. Is it? No. I don't know what that's for. An expansion an expansion port of sorts? It looks like it. RJ11 is... RJ11 is like phone port, right? Like, like dial-up phone? That's what it looks like. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, maybe an accelerometer. I'm sure, I'm sure the, our questions would be answered if I just open, open the box. <laughs> uh, there's definitely a bit of, it's a small, small detail, but there's a lot of grease. <clears throat> Let's see. I don't think you'll actually be able to see this very well on camera. You can kind of see that. There's a lot of grease on the back panel here. Like this whole area is covered in, I, I don't think that's, that could be for me. <laughs> it was my hands, but I don't think so. I think that's just the, the printer is kind of greasy. So. Let's flip this over. I believe the way we're going to open this <clears throat> is from underneath. So let's, is there anything I can break on this side? Nope, let's tilt it on this side. <laughs> yeah, I can already see the, <laughs> I can already see that it's a, a skipper type board. Um, I don't know how well, let's see. I need to get the white balance set differently on here. But if you look at that guy, that green heat sink is all I need to see to know that it's a MKS like skipper type board. The grease was there as soon as you unboxed it. Okay, cool. It isn't an AC bed. Interesting. Okay. So DC bed. Yeah, let's open this up. Um, what size? There we go. Possibly <laughs> I don't see any big flags, uh, any big flags from looking at it from the outside so far, which is a positive thing. I am curious to see sort of what the, how it all works, how it all works. Weirdly, my SQ1 wasn't covered in grease. <laughs> <laughs> did you did, did you submit a ticket? It's from the factory. <laughs> hmm. 
I'm sure it's just the stuff from the linear rails. <laughs> it's no big deal. All right, we've got a few more in the corner. This needs smaller, smaller size. Please check whether the voltage level matches. I didn't see. Oh, you know what? It's, okay. The make sure I check the voltage before you flip this on. I didn't see it, but it's on the other. Wow, this is holy cow! It's really stuck. It's on the side that the machine is laying on. Hey, llama! Oh, I'm back you guys out a little bit. There we go. These these feet are on pretty damn hard. Well, I mean, this isn't exactly the the most heavy duty. Okay, let's grab a different. <clears throat> it's starting to hurt my hands. Let's grab an Allen key. There we go. Um, two trees. I swear every single one of their printers from every single reviewer ends up getting the exact same results. Good value for components, but clearly nobody engineered to use this thing. <laughs> That's, I mean, that is more common. That is more common than like anything. I feel like there's a ton of printers that I get in that on paper should be it, like should be the one, right? Like, like this has all of the things that I want. And then it just, it just isn't tied together well. Uh, it doesn't look like also, so there is, I'm seeing right now that there is LEDs, uh, at least a, there's a strip of LEDs, which is nice. But I don't see a camera, so it doesn't look like, God, come on. It doesn't look like there's a camera. But if this is running Clipper as it is, it should be, with that external USB, you should be able to just grab a USB camera and plop it on there. These screws suck. I'm gonna hang this over the edge really quick so I can just, oh, <laughs> so I can just spin this. Yeah, these four corner screws are just, it's like they threaded them into the sheet metal. Well, I guess that's exactly what they did. Hey, Phil. I hate Phillips head M2 self papping screws. I love the socket head version. They're much easier to use, yeah. I'm just, I don't really, I don't really like Phillip head screws very much anymore. I mean, I guess if they're larger, um, whatever, but I'm so used to using, one second, there we go. Okay, let's not have this drop off. Okay, there is actually, there's no fan attached to this guy. So I didn't have to worry about accidentally pulling that out of a socket. Alrighty. Wow, those are some beefy. Those are the beefiest fans I have ever seen. Let me, because uh, instead of having the light kind of screwing up things for you guys, let's turn it this way so you guys get the light blasting everything. So these are these are beefy fans. Um, company Usong Usong Shine. I don't know that company. Uh, Twenty four volt fans, but these are. What are these, 4020s? <clears throat> uh, let's see. Yeah, 20. 24, yeah, those are big. Those are some big fans. I have some of their linear rails. Okay. Don't all the canvas boards have ADXL? Yeah, typically, yeah, typically they do have them built in. I didn't look for it specifically, but uh, the other ones have from from uh, MakerBase. So I would imagine this does. So yeah, t normally I see one cooling fan. This has two really big ones. We've got a. So we've got our antenna extender going from the boards one up to the outside. We've got one, two, three, four. Five motors, which makes sense. We got A, B, Tri C. So again, we do have bed tramming, which is cool. That's cool, right? Like that's not something. And when we're looking at the other manufacturers out there making, you know, budget. I'm gonna call $600 budget because it's a Core X Y. I know that budget means different things to different people, but for a fairly inexpensive Core X Y printer, that's not the norm. So I do like that. 
Don't all the cameras on heads. Um, the accelerometers are built in. They're offering an optional camera. I think that's the extra port on the side is for. Yeah, that makes sense. Hey, 3D Medic. Uh, it's got an EMMC add-on. So yeah, MKS EMMC add-on. So like there's some filament down here. Maybe it's, what is that? I don't know what it is. It looks like maybe it's screw adhesive. Oh, it's just never mind. They have adhesive all over all the ports. I don't love that. I really don't love that. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's not a whole lot. It's exactly what we thought. It's as, it's it's labeled as two trees T1 V1.0, but it's indeed a white labeled um, MKS skipper board. And we've got what else down here? This is a not a meanwhile. It's a. It says Cheng, Cheng Liang, and it's a 24 volt, 350 watt power supply. And we've got our, you know, again, we've got three Z motors, which are just kind of standard, <clears throat> standard size NEMA, NEMA 17s. So I, I will say like, if there's one thing that is worth complimenting down here, well, one, like the wiring is, in my opinion, fairly clean. Say what you will, I know everyone's got their different levels of wiring. Things are kind of ran everywhere, but like I've seen a lot worse wiring. They have things at least contained. There's sort of this like in between raceway that they zip tie things to. Um, and this is by far the most cooling I've ever seen. This is by far the most cooling I've ever seen for a main board. So like two beefy 4020s and another 4020 down here to exhaust the heat out. So yeah, that's really, that's what we got down here. Three ZX motors that run on one stepper drive. No, 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 no. They've got their own, all of them have got independent stepper drivers. So again, it's A, B, Z, zero, Z1, Z2, and the extruders ran off of CAN bus, so it's got its own probably 2209 in that tool head board. Yeah, I, I don't think this is necessary. If things are zip tied correctly, I don't see how these things are gonna be pulling out of their plugs. Like this just means troubleshooting or replacing things is gonna be not fun at all. I have three, 4028 fans on my VZBot controller. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. What happened to that poor motor? I don't know. <laughs> he pissed somebody off. All right, let's get the bottom back on for now. And then we'll get the voltage set. We'll get the screen installed. And then we'll power this baby on. How far? We're one hour in so far. That's we're doing. We're doing pretty good. Again, backtracking to what I just said, nothing about this is like, I, I don't see anything that I'm like, oh, that's not good. Like I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing here. If I can get this damn thing in, there we go. Hey John. Two twin on drivers to 1.6 amps to get a bit hot. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Oh, I, you know what I need to put back in is the, I didn't put back in that random screw that I thought was the extruder tensioner. I'm actually not sure if that's what it is. I think, I still think that's what it is, but I didn't actually take a very really good look at it when we had everything open. Does it have a cup holder? Yes. It can hold a big gulp. <laughs> it can hold a big gulp, John. John's turn. It has a hot plate. Yeah, it even comes with hot pockets. Come on, screw! All right, let's. No. Nope. God, it's the the angle I'm. Let me turn this towards me. Hard to, it's hard to line up the screw when you're not standing directly in front of it. We did it. Where'd you go on your trip, John? A lot of those 2U rack servers in the past, and they sound like... Oh, the, yeah, they're super loud, right? Those fans? Oh, those fans are... <laughs> so, I, I'm almost entirely positive that those fans inside there are overkill. <laughs> um, I think I will very likely, well, I don't know how they're hooked up. Oh, I won't be able to, because I remember the Chidi, the Chidi X-Max 3 actually is using one of these boards. Um, and 
if I remember correctly, there's only like one addressable fin port, I think. So they're probably all hooked up to the always on 24 volts or directly to the PSU. So that's actually, that's not a limitation or like a thing. Okay. That's not a limitation of two trees not configuring things correctly. It's a, more of a limitation of this uh, skipper board. I don't think it's a bad board, but it can certainly use a update if this is what seems to be the the standard that most of these manufacturers are going with that are that are running Clipper. It didn't have enough inputs. I'm nearly positive that is why they're always on. It's because they didn't have a choice. Why are we not going in? Why are we not? This is your home. Holy cow, dude. Why is this so tight? <clears throat> Let me try this last one. Yeah, I'm almost positive there's one addressable fan port. And then I have to look at the video I did. The video I did on fans in Clipper, I, I go over it. And it's this board, but again, the MKS the chitty version of it or whatever that they labeled, which I think is still the exact same board. And there was only one, maybe there was two, but one of them was being used for the LED. So what I, what I ended up doing was I swapped out the LED so that way the LED was always on, but the fan was addressable so I could turn it on or off or, or uh, lower it. And I have a feeling it's gonna be the exact same way with this, that the LED can be powered or the led light can be turned on or off but the fan can't so i mean if that's the case at least you can you can swap it if you want to dude these feet screws are super tough um eventually world garden uh another i just added a clipper expander oh nice I, that's actually that's a really good idea is that you could you could add a clipper expander to this as well although it would probably be external because like the usb cable would run externally i would think um because the usb ports are external facing unless there's another usb port you can tap into on the board but you could do that you could run some sort of an expansion since it is clipper which is really not a bad idea I wish, why, yeah, why didn't they do that? <laughs> it's Clipper, that's one of the beauties of it, is you can run multiple MCUs. They're doing that, or I guess they're, you know, it's over can, but like, I wonder why they didn't add a little extender board. Drill a hole. <laughs> I could, I could. I mean, I guess it's on the side. I wish it was on the back. It's a little less noticeable. Okay, let's, let's now finally open the box of goodies that this thing came with and see, let's see what it's got. Um, I do this without throwing this off of my workbench. There we go. There's a little depth. Okay, we've got a little manual. We've got our power cable. We've got cute little spool holder, a super small spool holder. I don't know that this will actually, this might not work with all one kilogram spools. It looks a little small, easy fix. We've got our white PLA. It's a, it looks like 200 gram roll. We've got our antenna, which we will definitely install. The TF is only used to update the screen firmware. Scan the QR code in the screen or the official website. Okay, so there's a four gigabyte micro SD card. We got some spare screws, which is what John mentioned. The uh, that this confirms that confirms what everybody was asking about the <clears throat> about the uh, nozzle. It is replaceable, so that's a definite plus. Let's actually take a look at it to see if it is just hardened or if it's actually got the added kind of insert. Nice, thank you very much for the five gifted memberships, man. Uh, let's do, you get, what's for dinner? What's for dinner? <laughs> Cause you were having dinner. Thank you very much, man. Cheers. Okay, so this is just a standard. I'm not even gonna take it out, there's no need. This is just a standard hardened steel. It does not have the like uh, CHT insert or anything like that. So but yeah, it is replaceable. So that's at least a plus. If you get a clog, you don't have to replace the whole hot end. You can, you can just remove it. It's a very small nozzle. So removing it might not be the most fun, but it's at least an option. We've got a USB flash drive, which maybe has our, we got another, what is this? Oh, cool. That's kind of neat. It has a, um, 
EMMC and TF card reader. This is neat, this is actually cool. So this is the first company that's actually provided this. So the EMMC module, uh, which again is a, is a maker based thing, you need this guy this, to flash it. So you can flash the image on it. And normally you'd have to order this from MakerBase, but they actually provide it. So if for some reason, like the EMMC module gets corrupted or whatever, you can, you can reflash it, which is pretty cool. I would think this also means you can flash other... Yeah, I guess that's it. That's cool though. I'm happy with that. Uh, I'm done. The kids are in bed now. Nice. What did you have for dinner? <laughs> I gotta know. So yeah, I like that it has that. Uh, other things we've got are some tools really quick here. Yeah, it's a small thing, but it's a nice addition. No, again, there's three other companies, at least I know of using this board and none of them, when I've tested their printers have included that. And one of them, it would have been handy. Why are we not focusing at all? There we go. Uh, we've got, oh, that's cool. Then that little nozzle, they give you a tiny wrench for it. So they give you what you need, some Allen keys. We've got needle nose pliers. We've got, okay, I, I <laughs> okay, for the next unboxing I do, can someone remind me to just open the hardware first? Look at this, guys. It's the freaking perfect screwdriver with a rotating top for those screws that I was struggling to find a screwdriver for. <laughs> oh my God. If I just opened it, I would have been in way better shape. So that's funny. Cool. So you get that. You get needle nose pliers, which look a lot like my iFixit ones. You get a, br ow, God. You get a brass brush. Be careful with that. And you get, it looks like four uh, nozzle needles. So no shortage of, of little bonus accessories some useful stuff too in there. And then we've got our screen, which is the final big thing we need to put on here. Pull out of the box. Also, while I'm at it, let me really quickly check the voltage, which should be on this side. Yep, and it is set to one. I think they have it. I think they have their sticker wrong. So it should be whatever is visible is what it's set to. So it says it says 115 is what's visible. So that should be correct. But the little thing says going to the right will make it 230 and going to the left will make it 110. So that should be correct. Their sticker is actually incorrect, which is kind of confusing. Uh, reduce, reuse, recycle. Treat yourself to a Miniware ES15 electric screwdriver. I've got a few electric screwdrivers. I've got the wow stick. I've got the... Um, a uh, Hodo, we've got the Hodo. Um, this one's, we don't use it very often because I just forget, I'm so used to using hand, you know, hand tools, but this is, this is cool. Yeah, PSU should be correct. I think their sticker is just, uh, is wrong. Yeah, the wow stick is kind of, well, not kind of weak, it's pretty dang weak, but it was nice for like V0.2, like printer for ant stuff. Um, and the Hodo, the Hodo's got more uh, ugga duggas, as Steve would say, and, uh, that one seems to fill fill the gap from the wow stick. So, okay, let's let me quickly look here at, turn this a little bit. Let's quickly look at the instructions as far as the screen goes. Uh, a letter to our clients. Cool, thank you for purchasing. About your printer, accessories list, fantastic. Uh, machine assemble. Okay, so removing the limit switch block. Okay, so it tells you to remove the blocks that we did. Speaking of that, again, I need to put that, that screw back in. So I don't know if, John, if you're still here, I pulled this guy out of the tool head, the thumb screw, and I think it's a tension. I think it's for tension, but there was no spring on it. And so I'm thinking the spring might be internal inside of that sort of, um, I'm calling it like LGX, LGX style gearing but I'm not entirely sure. It's weird, this thumb screw. I don't entirely know its purpose. I mostly use the Hodo for flat. Oh, really? It works, it's powerful enough for that? That's good to know. I had to, I built a like linen closet uh, a couple days ago and I used a, a Makita, no, Milwaukee little hand drill thing. I don't know, I, guess, I still think this is a tension thing. I don't know, I love my Hodo. I built modded three printers with it and assembled a bunch of furniture. No kidding. Okay. Well, I guess I, oh, oh, I'm excited. So um, we've been talking about the, 
the studio is really barren, right? Like there's, I, I kind of like the minimalistic look to be honest with you, but it's not been the goal. I ordered a bunch of Ikea furniture, but there's no Ikeas in Idaho. And the, the freight company that they use that does all the delivery doesn't give you different delivery options. Like it's, you pick your date and you wait. And the date was the earliest date when I ordered back in end of December, end of December or first week of January was mid March. It was March 14th, which I was like, wow. Okay. Um, they called me yesterday to schedule delivery for tomorrow. So it's coming a week early, which doesn't usually happen whenever I order anything. So hopefully this weekend I'll be assembling a bunch of Billy shelves and Alex drawers. And, um, I will, I will use the Hodo then I'll get it charged and see how that works out for me. Because normally I don't like using power tools and assembling sort of low cost furniture out of fear that I'll, I've damaged some. I've, dam I've used a full size drill and damaged furniture. So knowing that you guys are saying that that'll work well for it, I'll, I'll use that. I do my, uh, with a Milwaukee drill with the clutch on low settings. That's what I did with the recent one. It was with the Milwaukee drill on the lowest setting. Two, two I think was the lowest setting and it worked really well. I had to actually hand tighten everything just a hair in the end, which was exactly what I wanted. So, okay, we've got that screw back in. Let's get this thing powered on. Um, we are needing our antenna. Drop this down. Side to side, bam, bam, there we go. All right, little external antenna. <clears throat> I like that it includes these, but you also have to remember that this is external on your printer. The weight of these guys um, doesn't take much to bang this against something, you know, moving it around and snap the antenna off. But I'd rather have it than not have it, especially again, if it's going to increase your signal, your, your range. Okay, so we've got that. And then last thing really is the screen and oh, the filament holder. So filament holder looks like it goes right here. What's the difference between two and three? Nobody knows. Got to walk, walk it up until it feels right every time. Yeah, I went with, I was doing it all by hand, the um, linen closet thing I was building, but then you get to the back where you put those sort of panels on that sort of holds everything together and, and makes it where your furniture isn't a hollow cavity. And it, it had like these self tapping screws and the number 47 next to it. And I just, I looked at my hands and was like, hell no, my hands are already hurting so bad. So I, I, I took the, uh, I took the drill. Okay, so install a filament rack, M4 by eight. So I must have thrown these back in here. I thought they were all spares. I would be wrong. Uh, okay, so it's, I guess this is all of our screws, including some spares. Spare screw. Okay, these both say spare screws. <laughs> am I missing? Am I missing screws or what's the deal? Are they in with the? It's probably in here with this. Yeah, it is. For the price and what it lacks, I still prefer the smooth speed of the Hodo for assembly over things over hand tool. Uh, drills can be way too fast for good control. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll use the Hodo. I, it's one of those things, let's see, this needs to go this, there's only one direction this can go. This, this would not work for your spool. So, and this is a plastic, we'll, we'll use this for now, but I think that there's going to be like something like re remixing this, but remixing it so that you can use kind of the Voron style spool holder where it's got PTFE and it's a little bit longer is probably better going to be a better option, but for now we'll use this. Yeah. For me, one of the issues is when I get a new tool, I'm so set in or so used to doing things a certain way that I have to force myself to use that tool, at least initially. And that's sort of where a lot of tools stay is in that stage of like, yeah, well, I got this tool, but I'm, you know, I just don't think about it. So I just need to, I need to force myself to use the Hodo more, I think, and then it'll become second nature when I'm used to using it. Okay. So that's good. Uh, last thing is again, that screen just going on the top here. Uh, you've been missing the screws for <laughs> what's up Fabrico. Everyone say hi Fabrico. I've been missing here. Not wrong. <laughs> the screws, the screws stay in the lost and not found. Uh, this is a good point. Same for, Oh, kitchen appliances is the same. We've got, uh, the Instapot would be one of those for us. We got the Instapot. I use it a ton at the beginning to turn 
frozen chicken into beautiful cooked chicken for tacos. And then, and then um, we just stopped using it. And then we bought for Black Friday last year, an air fryer, like a, nin a Ninja air fryer. Um, Cause I was like, yeah, I've heard good things about it. It'll be fun. And I, I like, I like cooking when I have time. <laughs> the key word is when I have time. Okay, so this has to go opposite direction, right? So, hold on. Yes, that is the way it goes. So these go like this. Um, yeah, I like cooking when I have time. I mean, it, I, I can quite enjoy it, but yeah, we bought this air fryer. I tried making coconut shrimp once. It sucked. <laughs> it turned out it turned out so bad. I'm not good with shrimp, man. Shrimp is not. I enjoy eating shrimp, but so far I'm like two for two in strikeouts. I tried barbecuing shrimp one time, and man, does it go from like nice shrimp to beef jerky really quickly. Uh, <laughs> so, and then yeah, when I tried making the coconut shrimp, it just turned out like awful. So, it's the the air fryer has been sort of just collecting dust ever since then because I. <laughs> like, I felt defeated, I think. I don't know. Uh, tacos. Yeah, we're having um we're having a few of our old neighbors over or a couple of our old neighbors over next Friday to show them the house and hang out and uh we're gonna do carne asada carne asada tacos. We're just gonna get it there's a little Mart up the street that does a really good job of like the, the pre marinated stuff is awesome, but we're going to do that and just make street tacos style. So small tortillas and just some cilantro, uh, a little bit of cilantro, a little bit of onion, some pico. And, uh, I think Aaron's going to mix up or make some guacamole. She's pretty good at guac. <clears throat> I think this summer I'll end up getting a barbecue again. I, I had a barbecue in California, but it was a really like entry level barbecue and we couldn't fit it on the U-Haul. We packed it to the rim. And so we had to leave like a couple pieces of furniture. And uh, I think that I just left that barbecue with the rental for like whoever rented it after us. And then the place we were at for the last year and a half came with a barbecue and they said, yeah, basically whoever lives here can use it. So we had that, but now we just, we're back to not having a barbecue. And I love barbecuing. No cilantro? Oh, I gotta have the cilantro. Pico? <laughs> SKR Pico? <laughs> yes. You can you can mix uh <laughs> it's, it's pretty funny how <laughs> damn it, John. Uh since on the food stage, I'm about to start making a batch of rice pudding. Nice. From scratch? I've I've only ever done like pudding from <laughs> powder powder packets. Okay, so this this bolts on here. The screen's just held in place using these little plastic slots. So we'll plug in the single cable coming out of the printer, like so. Let's see if I can get it. Boop, there we go. And then I don't know, I'm imagining this is the direct, no, this is the direction that it goes. We'll find out, I guess, when I turn it on. Hold on. Nope, that is not right. It has to go on. I also am not trying to put too much strain on. Let's see. That has to be it. There we go. We did it. Let's do a little slow peel action, and then we'll get this powered on. Ready? Wait, let me, let's get it real nice. <laughs> real, let's get it real close to him. Here we go. Wait, wait, let me, hold on, hold on. I don't know if you could even hear it with, with the noise cancellation. <laughs> that was my, my effort. <laughs> From scratch, nice. Uh, get yourself a good old fashioned round Oh, a round Weber. Charcoal? Is that charcoal then? I, I like the convenience of propane, but my dad 
uh, they've got two barbecues, one at their like house and one at their little vacation house. And they are almost exclusively, I think, using charcoal. It's a little more work and you smell, <laughs> you smell really strong after, but yeah, charcoal tastes really good. Uh, let's see, an experience with power line? I, no, I, I don't know what that is. Get a nice little charcoal grill for Xmas. Uh, Christmas has been using it like crazy, even with gross weather I've been having. Yeah, bar I love barbecue, man. I, I'm a big fan, like burgers, uh, skewers. We we have done like uh, chicken skewers, but even we did salmon skewers. They're just real simple, uh, chopped up bell peppers, chopped up mushrooms, chopped up onion, chopped up um, uh, salmon in a little cubes, covered all in olive oil, did some salt and pepper and Oof, it's good. You're good for a couple days. Get some, get some white rice, or I make a rice pilaf, which is really good. You will never regret it. The taste can't be beat. Yeah, maybe I'll get, maybe I'll get both then. <laughs> maybe I'll get a charcoal one. I do agree. I do agree that charcoal typically, at least, tastes better. Um, it's just, it's a convenience thing. Being able to go out there and fire up the grill really quickly versus, you know, taking 15 minutes or so of charcoal heating up. Um, and you got you got good weather in Florida, man. And my dad in California too. Here it's like during summer I get it, but going out there when it's kind of chilly and waiting for the charcoal, like I just want to get out there and get my grill on. Okay, all right, let's let's power this thing on. Let's power this thing on. We're, we're here for <laughs> we're here for eighty percent printing and twenty percent food talk. All right, let's plug this in, and let's see how it goes. I'm optimistic this will be better than the the Chidi X Max Three. One, two, and here we go. Ooh, cool LEDs. So the first thing I'm gonna say is that yes, the fans are all on. Uh, the CAN bus fan appears to be on, cooling fans not. I think CAN bus fans on and board fans are on. Let me turn off, let me turn off the noise cancellation. I think you guys should hear this. Uh, I think you guys should hear this. It's maybe it's ramping up a little bit. It's not. It's not nearly as loud as I was expecting. Is kind of what I'm getting at here. Uh, let's see, desktop audio. That's not right. Road mic. Uh, oh no, it's filters. What we want off. One second, guys. Filter. Okay, noise suppression off. Audio should sound a little bit different now. I've turned noise suppression off. But this is this is it. Like right here. Can you hear the fan? fans. I mean, there's one, two, three, four, five, five fans running. It's not nearly as bad as I was expecting. I think you got those percentages back. Oh, is it 80% food talk? <laughs> we'll have to get, no, 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 no more nanner sandwiches. Yeah, that's not, that is a lot quieter than I was expecting. Don't get me wrong. There's a fan sound. Do I love it? Absolutely not. Do I wish this, I think, idled completely quiet? Sure. But considering the size of those fans, I was anticipating they'd be a lot louder. So, yeah, that's really not not bad. Again, I'll, we'll see if it ramps up once things are starting to cook. Um, but cook, <laughs> damn it, I'm, I, am on, I am on food talk. <laughs> okay, all right, okay. Well, let's check this out. So first impression of the screen is, I thought it was clipper screen, it is not clipper screen. I don't understand why. I guess maybe for some people, Clipper screen isn't great, uh, but for someone coming from Clipper, so we've got our home, we've got our settings. It's not awful, I guess. Lutfer? That was weird. Is that a bug? If you go to load and unload, yeah, that's a bug. So if you go to load and unload, fan changes to a different language, Lutfer. So can you connect the fan to another port? The issue is with this board, and I have to look again, I'll take it apart, but th this is running a MakerBase skipper board, right? It's white labeled, they call it the Two Trees S1 or whatever, they all have their own name, but it's what it is. It's it's definitely what it is. You can see the EMC the, <laughs> the e module still has the silk screening from MakerBase, it didn't customize that. And when I checked this last time, I think there's two controllable ports. So there's one that's used for fan control, and there's one that, um, at least on the Chidi printers, is used for the LED on and off, I believe. And so everything else is hooked up to just 24 volts on. So I, I don't know on this one, we'll check in a second whether the LED, the LED's off, so the LED is addressable. So it's the same thing on here. So you can connect one of these fans 
to the LED port and have the LED be always on or just get rid of the LED altogether. But the issue is limitation of ports. So um, Del Mar had mentioned the Clipper Expander and that actually wouldn't be a horrible option. Um, I'm sure Fabrico has them. Uh, I know Shami, you mentioned you got them from Shami. I've got one somewhere over here from the, from the Cyborg build. I don't know what the heck I did with it right now, to be honest with you. Um, but you could do something like that. But yeah, it's a limitation of ports. This looks very similar to a leak of the Bitratex Clipper version of their panda screen. Interesting. I haven't seen that leak. So yeah, home screen, you got your file explorer, which has local, USB, history, so a whole bunch of nothing. Screen brightness, update, network. It does have wireless. Cool. Calibrate. So let's, let's see. It's not awful. It's not awful. Like, I mean, again, I, I prefer Clipper screen. This isn't the fanciest of screens, but like, God, uh, compared to some of the things I've seen, like it's working, right? The Chidi one didn't work at all. Uh, there was a pin issue. Uh, and we just looked at the King Room one the other day that was like a 2.5 inch that required you to use a, a, um, a stylus <laughs> uh, if, we're, if we really want to go old school. So it, it's it's here. It's a screen. It's functional. I, I can't really, so far, I can't really say anything too bad about it. It's, you know, yeah. So here's the LED. It is addressable. Let's go. Okay on you. Let me escape. There we go. LED on. Yeah, there we go. LED on, LED off, and then fan. We've got, it says auxiliary fan, interesting, and case fan. Neither of those things exist, so clearly there's plans for upgrades. Someone mentioned January was supposed to come out, but same screen as the Adventure. Okay. Yeah, I have a feeling MakerBase is probably making these screens as well. It, that's what would make sense to me. Okay, let's let's go through really quickly. What's the setup process like that it wants us to use? We've done this. We've done that. Uh, machine assemble we're done with. Okay, this is a different language now. Is that it? It just goes through the assembly? It doesn't... Wait, what's this? I already calibrated the factory. Generally, there's no need... That's interesting. So there's no calibration instructions. And this has a little card here. Calibration is done at the factory. There's no need to recalibrate unless you replace the PEI. The printer adhesion has been infected. What is the state where the nozzle just touches the paper? Interesting. I don't know that I like that. I don't, I, I get it. I get it. This is Clipper and it's not automatic. Like things are not automated. And I think that the user should there should be additional details. So I'm going to not, uh, I, I screwed around the bed as is. So let's, let's do some, let's see here. Um, online, online manual settings, calibrate. So it's got zero Z offset right now. Um, I don't know what these buttons, so this must be, is this move? No, Z tilt. Okay, cool. So it's, let's do that. We click the Z tilt button. Let's see, let's see how it Z tilts. Yeah, we're gonna treat this as if it's not uh, factory calibrated because again, this is this is a Clipper printer. It's not running a custom firmware that maybe has some of those checks in place. I don't think that's a good idea. Yeah, I'm not comfortable with factory calibrate either. I mean, hell, even the bamboo printers that are using a closed firmware, it, it might be an automated process where you just click next, 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 but it has to calibrate based off your current you know setup. So. Yeah, and even this looks like there's an input shaper graph over here as well, which is what I would want to run. You know, I don't know what their table was like that they calibrated it on. So, uh, during the bed leveling procedure, it will automatically do the calibration if you so choose. Interesting. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll see. We'll run through this. We'll run through this really quickly here, then we'll get printing. Oh, also, let me let me open up our giveaway here. We're going to give away a spool of Polymaker filament in roughly 30 minutes. Also, how many, I haven't said to like the video once. You got 179 people here and 69 likes. <laughs> first, first off, <laughs> nice. Uh, there's got to be a, uh, <laughs> we'll do an air horn for that. Okay, now we got 70. But if you have not hit the like button, smack the like button. With 175 people here, let's get to, let's get to 125 likes. I know we can do that. <laughs> All right, let me let me post let me post the. I wasn't expecting that. That caught me off guard. I should have expected that. Uh, let me shorten the URL. Click paste. 
Also, uh, the winner from last week reached out to me. I, I'm behind on emails like always. The winner from last week reached out to me and asked, uh, they basically said they'd filled out the Polymaker form. I think I sent it the following day, so it's probably last Thursday, and they hadn't heard from Polymaker yet. That is normal. Um, usually, I think for a lot of people, it takes a couple of weeks before you actually hear back uh, regarding the giveaway. So I wouldn't, if it ends up being like two and a half weeks, then I would say ping me and I can reach out, but it's been fairly long. I'm actually waiting, let me, hold on, I can't multitask. this. I've been waiting on a message or, or feedback regarding some filament for a project from Plymaker uh, for a bit now as well. So I think they're just, that's, I pinned the wrong thing, didn't I? I think they're just behind right now. Uh, unpinned message. Did I not paste the giveaway link? <laughs> I don't, I don't know what I did here. One second. There we go. Pinning it again. If I, oh, I did pin it. All right, it double pin. This is taking a really long time to heat up, but okay, now it's doing it. It's that's what we. It's a DC bed, <laughs> so that's why that would have been heated up by now if it was an AC bed. So it looks like yep, sensorless. Is it sensorless homing? It's got to be sensorless homing. I don't see any switches, so yeah, it seems like sensorless homing to the back left. Bed's going up. Hey, Andre. I had a response from Sean the next day after I filled out the form. Oh, nice. Okay, sweet. That's good to know. Yeah, Sean's who I messaged. Um, and he said he said that regarding like filament sponsor stuff that Nick was working on something. Uh, I think that was on Friday. I just haven't heard anything. Okay, so it's doing a bed tram. It would be cool to see what it was seeing. Um, I think I might, I need to get it on the network so we can see what it's seeing. That doesn't look right. That, that doesn't look right. So that needs to be, I think that needs to be corrected. It's basically, oh, the sensor actually, no, 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 no. No, no, I'm, I'm lying, That's it's right. Um, what was that? PF, thank you very much for the 10, 10 gifted subs, man. Uh, let's do a Dugan and Squirrel. <laughs> Thank, thank you very much, PF. Yeah, so I, I didn't realize, I forgot again. No, this it, it's not as bad as it looks. The inductive probe on this is located in a really strange spot. So it's actually, it's actually a lot better. It's a lot better than it appears. It's still not right above the screws by any means, but I'm wondering, I'm wondering how big of a deal that is considering because since this doesn't have the, um, since this doesn't have the adjustable bearings, I can't think of what they're called again, but the bearings that like are on the Trident and what's used to pivot it, I don't know how it works as far as adjustments go. But because the fact that it's using an inductive probe that's off-centered, like back and off-centered, it wasn't as far from those, like it wasn't as far from the points I would like it as, as you'd think. <clears throat> yeah, it looks like uh, from PF, I'm trying to follow it. Um, it looks like Daniel UK got a membership. Deanna got a membership. Andre, DJ, Carl, email. Uh, Mick, Mick, Mike, Mickey. I don't know if I, Mick, I don't know which one that is. Um, Steve, Punisher. Our routes, and I think that I think that's it. Yeah, thank thank you very much, PF. Siege tent. Try to see see this a little bit of a V zero. You can still run the printer upside down if you can attach the screen wrong. <laughs> if you want a good propane, check out Weber. Okay, I will. Yeah, I'm, de I'm definitely going to be getting a propane uh, grill at some point. Just again, I like the I like the simplicity of it. They had the option when they had the house built to run a gas line, which my dad do for my dad did do so you can hook up like natural gas. I didn't do that. So I think I'll, I'll stick with probably propane for now. Any modern printer that doesn't use nozzle based probing. We've seen the light. Let us not go back to darkness. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> um, 
My least favorite probes right now are probably like a servo type thing, like a BL touch, then inductive, and then clicky, and then load cell. Like that's so load cell best, then clicky, then inductive, then BL touch, then manual. I think that's my lineup. So anyways, we did that. It's in the first step. Uh, this is probably for our nozzle. It says probe calibrate. I'm just gonna run through the four things up here and then we're gonna print and then we're gonna, we're gonna hope for the best. Uh, pellet grill is still my vote. Pellet grill, what is that? Um, well, I, I guess tap. So I like tap, I guess that's not fair. I, I guess what I'm, to me tap is more niche because of the fact that it's like made for Voron. Like it's really only for Voron. Uh, you've got it on like boop for the smaller ones, but I, I like tap as well Tap has been fantastic on the trident and I haven't had to adjust anything. I think if I had a complaint, so I still think load cell. So, okay. Okay. All right. All right. Let's do this again. So load cell top Then tap then clicky then inductive then BL touch my biggest gripe with tap is that it does affect the tool heads rigidity which does affect how fast you can go um because of the way tap works. I still think it's awesome. And I think for most of the speeds you can achieve are plenty. Like the tri Trident has not been printing slow, but it's still, I, I would, I still would, what is it doing? It says calibrating. Um, I still prefer load cell over, over it. Oh, beacon, son of a beacon. I like beacon as well a lot too. So uh, damn it. <laughs> okay. 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 So I think load cell, I think load cell is better than beacon. I think tap and beacon are very close. I think that tap is more convenient, but I think that beacon, the only thing beacon needs is some way to automate Z offset. If beacon had automatic Z offset, like you can do with the clipper plugin for clicky, it would be, it would be load cell. Then it would be beacon. Then it would be tap. But right now I don't know between tap and beacon. It just depends. There's a recent tool head design for V cores with a tap. Oh, that's awesome. I don't know what this thing's doing. It says it's calibrating. Once it's done with whatever it's doing here, I'm gonna put it on the network before we do anything else. I'd like to be able to pull up a terminal and see what it's actually doing. It says heating, it says homing, and it says calibrating, but I don't see any, I don't see any Z movement happening. Hey Jermaine. Uh, Beacon doesn't adapt to the PEI or other. Probably doesn't know what it's doing either. <laughs> it's the paper thickness test? Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. It is the paper thickness test. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, I don't know what we got here. Let's go with... Uh, <laughs> I wonder what's for dinner. <laughs> oh my god. All right, let's, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, so that's going the opposite direction. We want, no, I can't actually tell if we're going up or down. Okay, I think we're going the wrong way. So down is up, there we go. <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. Okay, here we go. What happened? What happened? Let's do it one more time. I didn't tell it was okay. Okay, I'll be right. <laughs> the test test. Yeah. <laughs> uh... I'll do this quicker this time. I'll do this much quicker this time. <laughs> <laughs> it needs the test end of the test yeah okay it's, i think it maybe it timed out i don't know <laughs> let's let's let it do it one more time i'll do the z offset really quickly and then we'll we'll get on the network i want to be printing i want to be printing within 15 minutes like buttons are reversed because it's moved the print head from print bed which is not what you see. Yeah, it's it's not just them though. It's a lot of um, it's a lot of 
the printer UIs where it like is set up as if the tool head itself was moving and not the bed. It's it's caused me to damage my bed before. <laughs> it is it has caused me problems before. So it's yeah. I mean it shows, right? Like it shows nozzle adjustment. So you Yeah. <clears throat> Another thing I do like about this PEI bed is that it does have registration screw marks on both sides. That's nice. I do not like having to manually locate the bed. All right, come on, point two. Okay, I feel it. Bed is pretty dang thin, uh, but that's not that uncommon on a lot of these little Clorox white printers. Like Bamboo's bed is also really thin. It does have a steel plate that reinforces it, which is also similar to what like the A1, uh, at least the A1 Mini uses. Okay, so what was down was I don't I don't remember now. Down, up is further away. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we'll go with that. Uh, we're okay. Cool. Okay, let me get this thing on the network really quick. Go to the side while I type in credentials. Uh, do, 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 do. Connect, yes. Yeah, this interface isn't. I mean, it's, is it my favorite interface I've ever used? No, but is it the worst? Absolutely not. It's responsive. Typing on the keyboard is fine. The way of barbecue, have a propane one for every day, a, a mobile one, a charcoal one, and one with really damn hot zone. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, I got our IP. Let's see if this works. Also, giveaway link is open. There's 68 people that have entered. I think there's a lot more here, so. It's pinned in chat if you want to enter in for a spool of filament. Did we hit? What are we at likewise? Ooh, 107? Okay, we're doing a little better. Let's get to 125. I believe it. We can do it. Uh, also, I forgot the IP already. Here we go. 192.168.160.1. Was it 146? Yeah. Nice. Oops. <laughs> hit the dinner button again. Here we go. All right, so it is running. Um, it is running full blown Clipper, which is nice. There's, we've got fluid. We don't have Creality OS or some skin to, uh, interface. Like we've got full blown uh, Clipper here. So we've done. I'm gonna really quickly do the last calibration, which or there's two more calibrations. So let's do bed mesh. Full bed meshing is happening now. Well, it's heating. Let's go under while we're waiting. Let's check out what this looks like. <laughs> Micro steps 128. It feels high. I don't usually run them that high. So we got our three, again, our three steppers. So stepper Z, stepper one, or I'm sorry, stepper Z, stepper Z1, stepper Z2. Hey, Mustafa. Hey, Steve. Daniel doxing his printer. <laughs> uh, you can do the timing in the connected MCU and report results. Open the toolhead files. Okay, I will. Z tilt, extruder, gear ratio 50 to 17. Kind of an odd ratio. Uh, where's our max temp? Max temp 302. So it does have pressure advanced values. So we've got, we've got a fan. What is this fan? Uh, MKS. Okay. So this is for the, this is for the tool headboard. We've got our case light. 
output output pin. I have no idea what that is. Uh, B I I I. So there is a couple of fan ports. Or okay, so yeah, I think there's two fan ports. I'll have to play around with that. Uh, Core XY, Max Excel set to 20K. TMC 2209 set to 1.5 amps. Wow. I mean, they're beefy, they're beefy uh, steppers. And then one amp for the for the Z motors, which is test them with manual command. What do you, what do you mean? Save variables, MCU ID. Okay, so this is tool headboard. Interesting. So it's. At least I think this is toolhead. Toolhead, I gotta be toolhead board. Fluid clipper screen MKS PLR. Weird. It looks like it's saying the toolhead has a serial connection. It's open, so cooling less of an issue compared to boron. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I think that's weird too, that the toolboard is serial, Ted. Uh, Cause it has, I mean, I know that typically, I thought, I thought at least that their board was can. I mean, it's even wired up to a four pin can boss board. Like a, like a four pin CAN bus connector. So they're running, they're running USB over it instead. It's interesting. Let's see what our... So our variance is 0.3467. Definitely could be better considering its size, but I've seen a hell of a lot worse. So it, it, that's not awful. Considering if you looked, I mean, this bed is very, very thin as well. I didn't think power loss recovery was a thing with Clipper because of the batch commands. Power loss is definitely a thing with Clipper, but I think part of it comes down to hardware as well. I think that if there's a, is it a certain capacitor that they add onto the board? LDO Nighthawk is USB. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, that's not bad at all considering how thin this bed is. I mean, it drips, dips off on that end, but I mean, <laughs> my, my underwire was 0.94 the other day before I shimmed it to get it down to 0.26. So... I'm not super upset about that. That was also, well, it, I think it did do a uh, tram before it did that. I, I think we should print, man. I think I think the printing is the answer right now. Let's let's go ahead and is there a config for this? Out of curiosity, is there a config for this in? Um, really quick here. Let me go here. Orca slicer. Does Orca Slicer have this printer? Every time I click, for anybody else, when you click the printer gear icon in Orca Slicer, does your computer freeze for a sec? It does it on multiple. Oh, that's not it. That's not it. It doesn't have it. Okay. Okay. Well, I guess let's see what's on there. Uh, flash drive. That's a cold mesh. That's true. That is a cold mesh. We'll probably have it meshed before it prints, but you're right. That is a cold mesh. I didn't think about that. <laughs> Can't do this. One more time for anybody that is just showing up. There is a link pinned in chat for a giveaway. We're going to be giving away a spool of polymaker filament in eight ish minutes. So if you have not definitely, uh, definitely sign up. Okay. Let's, Take a look here. Cura. So, oh man, I don't. Cruise sure config. Man, I don't. I don't even know if I have Prusa Slicer on here. I do. It's gonna be an older version, 
import config Nope, that's not what I wanted to do. Slicing config. Slicer software. Slicer config. Prusa config. Bundle. Okay, so it's because of a newer version of it. Okay, so let me okay, let me give this a fair chance. Also, I think that based off what I'm just seeing here. Let me do one thing. Let me drag this over. Okay, so there's already some sliced up files. So let's let's drag this to our desktop. And let's go here. And let's warm things up. Let's do 220. We grab some filament. Convert Prusa Slicer profile and Orca Slicer profile. What's the process? I isn't there a script or something, does it? I, I haven't actually done that. Um, let's find some filament. Here we go. Some pretty, pretty polymaker. Oh, we didn't do input shaping. Let's do that. Um, let's do that really quick, actually. There we go. Damn, that silicone sock is still not sitting sitting right after I took it off. <clears throat> Polymaker Modbot X, Polymaker Color 1. <laughs> I don't know. Here we go. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Curious to see what the results are like. Aperture F4. No, it's it's even. Uh, this is we've got aperture at. Oh yeah, F4. Yeah, yeah. It's on. No, is it on auto right now? No, it's on manual. So I can let me make it a little less aggressive. Here's is F5. Thanks for hanging out, John. <clears throat> Bad timing to leave, I know. Right before the first print. You'll hear, you'll hear about it. If there's uh if something <laughs> if something awful happens, you'll hear about it. Anyone interested in me posting pics of my workshop install? I've been documenting it as I got the cabinets installed. I would like to see it. If it's, since you're documenting it, I feel like that would be cool under, um, almost like a thread. Bigger number equals bigger depth of field equals less refocusing. Yo, I have it on manual focus. Um, I've been on manual focus right now, but yeah, you're right. I mean, for the sake of this, I probably don't need to get, I like the, the shallow depth of field, but you're right. If I had it set, if I had it set wider, I wouldn't have to, I wouldn't have to hunt for it quite so much. Yeah. A build log thread would be really cool. Your shop looks awesome. Nice. I saw the post you did the other day. Like I'm definitely jealous of your, your uh, like cabinet, cabinet area. It would be, you know what? That would be a cool, I don't think right now in the Discord we have a channel for like workshop, workspace, whatever. Um, we should have that. 
I think it's cool for, I wonder if it should be just a general channel or if it should be threads. I think threads could be kind of cool. Can I wait for you to build out your space? Dude, me and you both, man. I did, I think you saw it, uh, John, but I I did, uh, okay, so we're doing, <coughs> we're doing Y axis now. It suggested a max acceleration of 13K with MZV. Uh, yeah, we did. Before I moved in, my dad and, and me painted the full garage because for some reason here, like none of the builders finished the garage. So like I did have, I paid to have it insulated and it does come drywall, but it's not painted. So we painted it. It's all, we went white. I wanted white just because it looks clean and for recording the light, it bounces light really nicely. So I want just white walls. Um, and then we epoxied, we epoxied the floor, uh, but like we le like did it legit. Like I ordered this stuff from a company in Florida that makes uh, hundred percent solid epoxy. I rented a diamond grinder, like did it, did it correctly. So it looks really nice. It needs now, um, organization. <laughs> and shelving and stuff like that. But the, the bones of it and stuff look really, really nice. It's a Midwest thing. Builders never finished the garage. Yeah, it's bizarre here. Like nobody. I mean, I, I thought initially because the rental was the same way that we were in. And I thought when we first moved out here, oh, maybe it's just a us thing. But when I've driven around and, you know, garages are open, it's very rare to see a garage that's not just drywall with, you know, like tape between the drywall. I spent a lot of time uh, growing up in my parents' garage. My dad's always done weightlifting and stuff, and uh, we had ping pong table and all that. So like, we we had rafters that were open in my parents' garage in California, but the walls were done. You know, it was like a nice place with a stereo, and so it's weird to me. Like, I get it. I guess maybe more people. Not everyone's a garage uh, troll, <laughs> but I'm a garage troll. Like, I love my garage. You know. Uh, what does finishing the garage mean? Like I get finishing a basement, but what is finishing garage? Basically finishing the walls and floor. So, so yeah, the walls are, it's just, it's drywall. Like it's, it's sheetrock with like tape in between it and some mud. Uh, I think that's what it's called. I'm not, I don't know construction that well, but that's what I think it is. And, um, and then, yeah, the floor is just like, I mean, the flooring, I guess is that standard. Normally the floor is just concrete in, in places, but it's mostly the walls for me. That's a weird one. And also the thing that I thought is weird is that a lot of the houses here don't come standard with a man door, like a door to the outside from the garage. The rental we were in didn't have one. And this place I had to pay to have a man door installed. It's like, I've, I've always, how do you get to your backyard without going out front? It's weird. Okay, so. Did it air out? Nope. It's making a very loud ringing sound, but it, it did. So it recommends. Maybe it did air out. This is what I've got. I, lo I love the garage. No, it's, it's, it's not ringing in the audio. Like the machine is beeping MCU. MKS, THR shutdown, scheduled digital auto event will exceed max duration. Once the underlying issue is corrected, so I'll do a firmware restart. I think that, I think that it saved it. Let's see if I go to config. No, it. I think that the screen auto saved it. I think it was a macro that they have built in. So when you run it from the screen, it automatically does that. Let me see really quick here at the bottom. Mm, input shaping. Yeah, I think so. I think that that's, there's some, that seems like a firmware issue that this is automatically doing a save config thing, but it's not firmware restarting. Uh, would a dual 50, 15 modification be worth it to this guy you're saying? I would probably rather go with a, um, I would rather connect a, uh, auxiliary fan to it. Okay, let's heat this up and then get a print going. This has actually been, I know, I didn't hear you saying that, but one, we've taken a lot of time just to look at all the little details of it. This has been one of the smoother live 
unboxings and setups. Like compared to the Chidi, compared to the King Room, um, it's been pretty smooth. Check to see if input shaping has changed from the last auto rename file. Check to see if input shaping changed from the last Oh, oh, from the last auto renamed file. I get what you're saying, because it creates a new CFG file. Okay, so we saw, so the current printer.cfg file is here. That's a good point. So he's just saying we can check. Uh, so we've got here MZV 70, so 76 and 64, both MZV. And if we go here, and we go here, yeah, it did. 80 and 85. It did change. So it did update. Okay. Two more minutes. <laughs> two minutes on the giveaway. If you have not signed up for the filament giveaway, I'm going to close it in two minutes. I'm going to load a spool of filament and hit print while, while this is happening. <laughs> I want to get a print going. <laughs> We've got to get a print going. He restarts perma automatically very quick without seeing it on screen. Yeah, I, there was no issue with that. The beep was weird. Um, the beep was weird and annoying, but it, it's it's because it restarted the firmware that it did that. So let's push push filament through. Uh, I don't like that. It seems like the the Bowden path is tight. Hmm. This might be another situation where the Bowden tube needs to come out of that cable chain. Uh, I'm going to show this really quickly because I think this stuff is, I mean, just interesting. So the, oh, shoot, sorry. This is the route, like this is the Bowden tube, right, coming off here. So this turn or this curve right here is too sharp. It's too sharp too quickly. So once the filament gets right, you can kind of, no, you can't really see it, but once the filament gets right here, I feel pretty heavy resistance. And then once it passes through it, it's less resistance, but it's still not good. Um, I'm almost tempted to pull, I'm almost tempted to just pull the damn tube out. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Or at least pop it out, um, let's see. Pop it out a little bit more, does that help? Mm, it's just a tight turn, I don't think. Okay, we'll leave it for right now. I popped out a couple more, but I think that Bowden tube doesn't, doesn't need to be in there. Okay, so I loaded the filament and the machine beeped twice and the lights flashed. Um, so it seems like, is there a macro? No, that was weird. Okay, uh, let me quickly load. At some point here, we can do a magneto, uh, magneto, a magneto X stream as well. I've got, I mean, my unit is a early unit. It's a beta unit, so it's not exactly retail. And I'm waiting on, I need to flash the tool headboard with one more thing and waiting on one thing with the hot end. But I mean, we could still do a stream with it. Um... Okay, let's try to extrude 50 mil. I feel it grabbing. Haven't heard anything good about this printer. I haven't necessarily either, but I also haven't heard anything bad about this printer. It sort of has just existed in the shadows. And looking at the current options out there that are alternatives to bamboo, in the budget, uh, you know, Core XY space, like let's just say six, seven hundred dollars and less, there's not a lot out there. I mean, people complain about the crealities, people complain about the cheaties, like so, you know, it's sort of like what is the best alternative option for people that want another option? All right, so let's now go ahead and do a jobs upload and print desktop. We're just gonna start with a Benchy, I think, SK1G code. We've got Benchy and boxes. We'll do Benchy. Cool. Mine has been running really good. I've watched a few videos about it. It looked like a good budget printer. 
but they half-assed it. Yeah, I mean, that's sort of the name of <laughs> it's every single company. I can't think of any company that's like put out something really that's not have things or make you scratch your head. Okay, let's, I'm removing the, I'm removing the giveaway form. Uh, let's remove it and then unpin it. So if you're filling out the form still, we'll give you another 60 seconds and then I will download the entries and we'll get this going. Ooh, we got 124 likes. The goal was 125. There's 180 people here. New goal, let's get to 150 likes. 150 likes, I believe it. I believe we can do it. Uh, Sven, okay, Sven, you have one of these as well. Mine works fine also. I wish the company would come out just selling a decent starting point without any electronics or casing. Interesting. That's an interesting concept. They wouldn't be able to support it though, right? Like, I think the issue is with open in general is how do you support it? Like, if, if someone gave you a Core XY frame, right? And it didn't have the hot end or it, it didn't have the motherboard is just the frame. How do you know whether like, how, like I, how do you know whether it was something mechanical or electrical? Like, you know, you know that people are going to be emailing the company that provided the core unit. So I don't know. I don't know how that would work. Support's tough. Support is one of the toughest, I think, aspects of almost any any product that's sold. I mean, I work, uh, most people here know, like I work for Lightburn, which is a software company, and we, support is interesting for a, a non-tangible ass, like non-tangible thing. And then I worked previously at Matter Hackers, which is all hardware, which is completely, like the support is completely different, but they're both, like it's just challenges, no matter what you're, no matter what you're selling. Isn't that just a Voron kit? Kind of, but the Voron kits sort of do come with most things. I do support for TH3D. It can be fun at times. Yeah, support. I did. I was so for Matter Hackers. I was quite a few things, but I was sales, and then I was um, I was what the heck was I after senior, senior sales associate? But it was a hybrid role between support and sales. So I did a ton of support for my customers, and yeah, it's it's just wild. Hey Dutch, sounds like a fun challenge. <laughs> That's what you call a kit, a frame kit. Having watched the Matrix support Facebook over there, eh, people demanding and holding support for three or four hours. Yeah, it's nuts. Again, it's, well, that's okay. All right, all right. Got a little purge line action. Okay, a lot of purge line. Is that a brim or is that a massive? No, no it's just a skirt. Okay, cool, it's printing. So let's, um. Let's get the giveaway going before I squirrel out onto something else. I just really want to quickly see it go to the second layer. One second, because the first layer is always slow. So sure, I got email saying firmware disabled their USB port. <laughs> yeah, the, some of the like, uh, some of the inquiries are. Oof. You kind of have to laugh. Okay, outside layer. We're boogieing. We're boogieing. Okay, we're slowing down because we're bridging over the text. Slow out, slow outer layer. Okay, we're going straight to infill. So it's two bottom layers. Okay, yeah, so far so good. It's definitely whipping. Is the SK-1 hot end fan running? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Oh, hot, wait, hot end fan? You mean you mean the layer cooling fan, right? Not the hot end fan. If, if the hot end fan wasn't running, we'd be we'd be having some errors, some, some heat errors. Oh, 147 likes. We need three more. Okay, I'm downloading, downloading the giveaways. Only 113 entries? Well, the people that entered are gonna have a better chance, better chance than normal at winning this pool of filament. Let's see, extract all. Extract. It's shaking my monitor. <laughs> it's pretty aggressive, man. It's 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 not disappointing as far as like 
this slice benchy speed. I'm curious. Guess what should be delivered here tomorrow? Is it a f is it a frame Dutch? Oh, music's out. Cool. Thank you. It's time for our boss uh, boss music. Here we go. Why don't I know what's showing up for you tomorrow, Dutch? Oh, oh, a Prusa, nice. Did you just, was the main reason for wanting to get it just sort of to see what the whole experience was like? Uh, did this thing come input shaped out of the box? Uh, so it did have input shaping values. Yeah, the, the little, this is, where the heck is it? There was a small piece of paper, here it is. This small piece of paper, you can't see it, but it basically just says like, this thing comes pre-calibrated, have fun. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm mean, i paraphrasing, or you know, sort of changing things a little, but yeah, it said it was all ready to rock and roll. I did run through everything myself. I did do a mesh, I did do a uh, bed tramming, I did do a Z offset, and I did do a input shaping, but we did confirm at least that there was, I don't think there was a Z offset value, but there certainly was an input shaping value, but I, I did run it again because since it's on a different platform, I wanted to make sure it was as accurate as possible. Um, never had a Prusa printer before. Lightburn is the way... Light, Lightburn's awesome. I mean, I've, I've been using Lightburn for four or five years since I had my K40 that I modded back in the day. Uh, also, but I also hear from people that it's like reliable workhorse. I can use one of those as a backup. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I wouldn't be against getting a uh, Mark IV in to try out. I know at one point, Pooch had mentioned that he would he would be up for some kind of a stream collab thing where I think I assemble a Mark IV, so maybe maybe we'll end up doing that. We need to reach out to him. Okay, let's do this. So we've got our first giveaway of March. Uh, it's kind of exciting news. Next Wednesday we'll actually have two giveaways. Uh, so the, we're going to be building the Stealth Press uh, heat insert tool kit uh, from KB3D. I've printed out all the parts, so. Excuse me. Um, we're going to be doing that. It'll be kind of a chill hangout stream. And as part of that, um, the uh, Creator Iconic and uh, KB3D have offered up a kit shipped anywhere internationally or, or you know domestically, so anywhere in the world. So next week we'll have both a Polymaker spool giveaway and we'll also have a KB3D kit shipped somewhere. So I'm looking forward to that. I haven't ever... I've always done just sort of hand... Um, Hand, hand soldered in, or not soldered, but like hand pressed in heat inserts. And I've had a pretty consistent time doing that, but I'm not against using some kind of a tool. And I think that for for some people just starting off, it's, it's nice to have something that's going to consistently put things in at a 90 degree angle or, you know, straight down versus, versus not. So it'll be fun. It'll be a good time. Yeah, there's Iconic. Yeah, so it's going to be a good time. I'm looking forward to it. I started printing out some of the parts for it months ago uh so i just finished the last couple pieces it's a combination of uh, carbon pet glass pet and carbon abs parts so it should be pretty i'm looking looking forward to it so okay uh so on that note uh anyone that has not been to one of these giveaways before if you are the winner i will send you an email within 24 hours and you'll just basically fill out a form as mentioned it's it can take polymaker some time to get back to you so I would say if it's been two weeks from when you submitted, feel free to ping me and I can reach out, but don't be concerned if it takes up to that time because again, it's just, I think it's still a manual process and they're definitely busy. There's a lot of channels and, and, and giveaways and stuff that they are uh, supporting. So on that note, how many times are we going to shuffle today? How many times are we going to shuffle today? Let's do a range today, let's see. It's 219. That's our range. Between 2 and 19. The MK4 tool head looks reasonably appealing with that big gear. Yeah, the next shooter tool head looks awesome. I was looking at the self press. That's going to be an informative stream. Yeah, it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to Again, I've, I've been looking at different variants for quite a while. Okay, we've got 13, 69 is not an option, 420 also not. Uh, I see a lot of 13s, a lot of 7s. 13, 12, 11, 12, we're gonna go with 6.9. Do 
11. We'll do 11 today. All right, here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Alrighty, good luck, everybody, in 3, 2, 1. Here we go. Jeff, Jeff Montgomery, you are our winner. Congratulations. Have you won before? I feel like maybe you have at one point. I, I definitely, super familiar. I, I feel like you've won before. It's been a while since I think we've had a repeat. It's been a lot of new names for a long time. Congratulations. Let's do a, um, let's see. We'll do an air horn. And then we'll do uh, a Dugan for that. Congratulations. So I will, hey, ask her. Uh, so I will send you an email again either later today or tomorrow with the form. And uh, I, they do gift cards everywhere in the world now. So you'll end up getting a gift card. So congratulations. And thank you everybody else for for entering. All right, now back to, back to the uh, madness that's happening here. It's looking pretty damn good. Considering it's a 50-15, I see a single string so far coming off the back, but I'm, I'm pretty impressed by the the front portion. I don't see I don't see any droop or anything. Considering it's just that 50-15. Hey, Steve's here. A salty licorice candy. What about single-handedly providing this person with all their filament needs? <laughs> what stream deck are, am I using? Ah, uh, the original, I think. I, this is a one, two, three, four. It's a five by three. So I think it's the original stream deck. I've had it for, I think I've had it for about three years now. It's been great. I really like it. I, I probably should be doing more fancy things with it, but it's just really convenient versus having to use my mouse and try to figure out which scene I'm in. It's just, yeah, I, I, I definitely like it. Heck, even if you don't stream, it's really cool for just macros for any program. I, I know people that use it for CAD stuff as well. Salty licorice. Next time I might bring a large case of licorice. I didn't enter, let someone else in. I like salty licorice, but there's there's a uh, there's like a defining line between salty licorice and salty just for the sake of being salty. My mom likes all of it. Like she, it can be a salt bar with like a drop of licorice, and she's like, "Yes, I'm on board." But I, I like I like an in between. I like the saltiness, but this you gotta have some sweet to it as well. Uh. Oh, I, I got excited. <laughs> he said, I can stick around. <laughs> Have a day full of interviews. Stop on the rest of the stream. Hey, I hope the interviews go well. Thank you. Knock on wood, it's been a pretty smooth stream <laughs> so far. You'd think that like an unboxing and setup stream would be pretty smooth, but man, more often than not, they are, <laughs> they are not. <laughs> tequila with salt. I don't do, I, I, I will drink and I like a mixed drink. I don't really like tequila. It's the one, I, one booze that just, it just, <laughs> it gets me on edge, man. The, the exception to that is I do like a good margarita here and there. Like there's a, there's a spot we go to locally and I, I will get there just classic margarita on the rocks. So we've got some stringing happening. Definitely got some stringing happening. I think that's my only real complaint so far. Maybe some tiny bit of artifacting on the sides. We'll take a look at it after, but I, I got to say that for one cooling fan and the speed it's pushing out of the box, it's not bad. Yeah, they really they grease the crap out of those rails. I'm looking at the the Y rail on the left there, and it's got grease coming from the rail, basically dripping down to the bottom. So I think that's where all that grease came from. They just they hit it with a bunch of grease before they shipped it. Is the text visible in the back of the benchy? Yeah, yeah, it is. 
I'll show a close up once it's. Oh, I can actually. Burp, through the power of. Hold on. Um. <laughs> uh, I can't actually see the screen to see if it's in focus. Uh. I don't know if that's doing a really good job of showing it, but it, it it's pretty. Not bad. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Skills <laughs> up. I'm a, I'm a uh, now like a whiskey and scotch. I, li I like that. Yeah, it's not bad. Currently doing a glass of St. James Royal. Nice. I was pretty impressed with the SK1. Yeah, my biggest complaints about this printer. Honestly, from this initial look so far is I wish all the fans were were controllable. Um, especially the fans down below, because again, there's three fans. Uh, there's a PSU fan and three additional fans. And there's three fans in the tool head. You've got a hot end fan, you've got a tool head board fan, and you've got a 50-15 blower fan. And I, I think that the, I think that only one of those, no, I think that only two of those I don't know. <laughs> the 5015 is clearly controllable. I, just, I think the hot end fan might always be on, and I believe the board fan is absolutely always on. So, fans are the first thing. Uh, the Bowden tube, the way it feeds through, I don't like that. I think that, again, it either needs to be pulled out further down the cable chain line to not give so much drag on the filament, or the, the Bowden tube realistically doesn't need to begin the cable chain. It can float above it. Uh, that's probably a better option. And... Anything else, really? The screen's okay. I mean, again, I can complain. I can complain about everything to an extent. Like, there's better screens, but it's really not bad. I don't know that it's fair to really complain about the screen. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's really not not bad. I think. Oh, I think that the. I think that the one thing I don't like, which again, it's not two trees. It's it's every manufacturer really, really with asterisks. I mean, there's some that probably don't, but is, is the the marketing's BS. Like the product page when we're looking at it, it said 700 millimeters per second. Um, and, and the thing that bugs me is it's just it's it's misleading. It's what it is. Um, I mean, I mean the number they use is typically the travel speed, right? If it's that, like, you know, if it can even reach it during travels, travel movements. But it's just, in my opinion, if, if a statistic is is posted, there should be, at least in small text, what it what exactly that means. Like, hey, if it can print at, or like, let's say if it's talking about the hot end, right? It says the flow rate is 25 cubic millimeters per second. Okay, in what parameters, right? What was the filament? What was the temperature? Because if you if you say that, but you tell me you printed PLA at 255 for it, like that's not that impressive, right? Like you, you scorch the stuff to death, or you know, or it was a, a, a super high flow material that, that made it easy. So it's just the details like that matter, and the manufacturers don't provide it, and I understand why they don't provide it because nobody provides it. So why is one company gonna basically sell themselves short when nobody else is? But it's just, I, I wish it wasn't that way. I, I really wish it wasn't that way. I think the LO, uh, in two-part symbol on the board, fans on, yeah. So, uh, Elegoo, Chidi, and uh, Two Trees are all using this board. I think those are the main vendors I've seen using it. Yeah, they're basically just white-labeled uh, maker base skipper boards. That's funny that you got an ad for Mark IV. Thanks, Lightburn, laser engraving of wine glasses as a walk in the park. What are you, what, what's your machine that you're using, True Tech, for, for the wine glasses? Is it CO2? It's probably, it's gotta be a CO2. Here's the thing about fan control to me is there is like 50 cent ITC control chip that can control so you can get repeated in channels and eventually so there really is no excuse. Yeah, I mean, again, plus with Clipper too, if they don't want to make a new, if they don't want to re, like if they have this board and they don't want to remake the board, just make a little extender that plugs into it that gives you those ports. Have you checked the board pinout specs? Might be able to do watermark on the fan control. I haven't. I don't know. See, the, the thing is, I'm not entirely sure. I know on the on the uh, on the Chitty Tech printer, it was a modified 
skipper board. So they didn't have all the connections in place and a few things were slightly different. So like, um, I think they only had one, two, three. I think there was only three drivers in that board. You had Z, you had A, you had B, and then E was part of the tool head. And there wasn't even sockets for additional ones. Well, this one, which is the same exact board, has six drivers in there. So they, they slightly modify it. Um, so I don't know if you can use the base schematic that MakerBase has, or if you would need a unique schematic. So I, I don't know if it's the same board with just non-populated holes, or whether it's they're actually truly doing some slight modifications to the baseboard. I, I don't know that. It's just anyway, people just buy whatever. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, they do. I think the biggest problem is the average person doesn't know that the speed is basically meaningless. No, it's 100%. Like, it, it, it gets people that don't know. Boy, you are stuck. <laughs> All right, hold on. I was expecting that to just come right off. Maybe my Z offset was a little... No, that wasn't bad. Adhesion's really good on this PEI. Um... And again, I mentioned this earlier, but the uh, both sides have these little cutouts, which does mean that it's going to be a lot trickier for a third-party vendor to make a, a bed for this guy, but... It is nice, the alignment, um, it's it's really nice having the alignment on far ends like that. It makes it so simple to just make sure your bed's lined up perfectly every time. Has that been really worth the 76 euros? I know that, uh, is it difficult for you to answer? I, I, dude, so before working at Lightburn, I, I've, I paid for Lightburn. I have had Lightburn for years. And the thing is, so when I got the K40, uh, the K40 wasn't compatible with Lightburn because of the board it has in it. So I had to use like really crappy software. And then I used another piece of software called K40 Whisperer, which was better, but still not great. And once I found Lightburn, man, it it is leaps and bounds better than any of the other software I've tested for lasers. I have primarily just used those. And then after working at Lightburn now, uh, because I do the videos for Lightburn and some of the different lasers, I have to use the software temporarily that it comes with before I can get it working with Lightburn. So like EasyCAD is one for um, fiber lasers. And dude, it part of it I'm sure is muscle memory. Like once you use the software, since Lightburn is typically, it's fairly machine agnostic. It's more about the firmware it's running. So if it's running like Gerbil or EasyCAD or it's running a Trotec uh, or it's running a Ruida, like it's compatible with all these different things. But just having to learn the one piece of software and then having that, I mean, yes, certain technologies like for fiber lasers, you have additional settings and some additional functionality that you can do with them, but like, it's really freaking nice, man. It is really, really nice. Yeah, and the price, so when you buy the license too, you get one year of updates with it, but you can, like once your one year runs out, if you decide not to renew, which if I remember correctly, I don't work in sales, I'm in education side of it doing videos, so I don't remember the exact of the renewal, but I think it's, I want to say it's 25% of the total license cost to renew it for 12 more months. Um, and the updates that the dev team are working on that come out, they're freaking awesome, man. Like they're really nice. I'm a, I'm a big fan. Like I pay the, the main software that I'm like the paid software I'm using that's rep repetitive is Shaper 3D. I pay every year $160, I think for that. Um, and like, I mean, Lightburn since I work there, I don't now, but like it's, it is, if you're using lasers, it's, in my opinion, absolutely worth it. Even if you just buy it initially and decide I'm, I'm okay with the functionality it has and after the 12 months, I don't want to renew. That's, you know, that's your call. But yeah, I, I definitely think it's awesome. EasyCat has all sorts of bugs and crashing. Okay, so here is our Benchy. My main complaints, stringiness, which I think could be adjusted maybe with some retraction settings. Um, I think with some attraction settings and maybe even dropping temp down like 5C. Um, let me see, I wanna get this close so we can like really take a look at it. Cause it's it's pretty clean, man. Like this is, oops, where are we at? So you can see some ringing, right? You see some ringing right there. I think it's because the input shaping we ran at 
Is this filament dry? I don't, I don't dry PLA, so it, it's, it is what it is. <laughs> um, the input shaping is. Wait, yeah, I was wondering if they use a different blend of PG for that. Um, the the acceleration is set to 20k, but the input shaping I think said I didn't recommend it over 13. So that's probably part of it is the input shaping isn't able to compensate for all the ringing. As far as the actual cooling on the front here, it did a really clean job. There is like it's sharp. It is there's no droop I'm seeing. That turned out really nice. Stringing is the key thing. I think stringing is really the main thing. Let's look at the top of this guy. The back of it where the text is at. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I forget. Yeah, I'm, I went from California to Idaho, so it, it's not... This is not Florida. <laughs> yeah, I, I dry I dry all my PAT, I dry all of my TPUs, I dry all my nylons, and if I'm doing something like PVA, but PLA, ABS, and ASA, I, I never dry. I, I don't have issues with it. At least nothing substantial. We got a little bit of, I guess a little bit of droop right there, which, you know, again, the bridging from the cooling, but I mean, what was the speed, what was the time? I don't actually know how long this print took. Um, Okay, so this says it was an 18 minute Benchy. It says actual 18 minutes total 21. So I don't know, does any, I don't know how that is calculated in fluid. Is that basically heat up time? Like this includes heat up time or this includes mesh time or, or, or the prep time and this is the actual model, but 18 minute Benchy. Yeah, that's a great, it's a, considering again, like this is just, oh shoot. Um, considering again, this is just a, a singular 50-15 so I'd be curious, you know, if they end up coming out with their enclosure, um, even if they don't call it the enclosure, but they have a way to add the auxiliary fan that the screen has baked into it. It seems like there's plans for auxiliary fan, how it would look. I do think, again, the, this right here, I don't know about the ringing. Um, I don't know about the ringing. I don't really know. It's on a pretty rigid, it's on a pretty rigid tabletop um, on a slab of quartz. So I don't know that I could really get my input shaping results that much better. I mean, granted it's using, it's using a tool head board, um, which is not going to be as accurate as something like a nozzle ADXL. There's probably some additional, I would imagine there's some additional chatter happening up here from cable chain attachment point and just it being further away from the nozzle. Uh, I had some stringing, got rid of most of my dropping the temps. Yeah, that's, that's, it's, it prints at 220, which is, 220 is what I normally print my PLA at, um, because I like printing on the hotter side, but that does usually mean that you might get some stringing. So I, I think that also dropping it's probably not the option. Temp tuning, yeah, temp tuning and retraction. Yep, 100%. I think this filament hides the defects a little bit with the slick, with the slight fill look. We can run, what time is it? Uh, it's 238. We, we want to run one more Benchy? We've got time to run one more Benchy. I've got to, uh, I have to cut it off pretty close in about 20-ish minutes here because I'm, I got to go finish my son's birthday cake. We're doing a video call with both Aaron's parents and my parents to watch him open his presents and smash a birthday cake. Uh, let's see, I think I've got, here we go. I've got some voxel, um, voxel gray and voxel silver, just standard. I think that maybe, I'll let you guys pick which one you think will show imperfections better. <clears throat> um, there we go. Oop. Which one do we want? Top is gray, so gray is more uh, gray is more glossy, definitely more glossy. And then silver is less glossy, but it also has more sheen. So I wonder if. If you're thinking that Sheen is hiding a little bit of the detail, yeah, gray. I see the first two say gray. I think that gray probably is gonna be the more, um, the better option. Do you notice that some screws did come loose after about 100 hours of use? Which is odd, they're in Loctite. Interesting. Uh, which which screws are you, are you seeing that on? Linear rails? Or are you talking about like the, the attachment points? The attachment points to the linear rails? 
Okay, two two say gray, one says silk. Let's do it. Let's do a two minute vote. I'm gonna here. Let me drop it. Drop it like it's hot. There we go. All right, we're gonna let this. Uh, we're gonna do a quick vote. Uh, what color? Oops. What color to print? Oh dang it! I gotta. One sec, guys. This is my first time. My first time doing this. Uh, Wait, what the heck? <laughs> Did they uh, top chat, live chat, fan fun, fan funding? I am confused. Where, where's? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I got it. I got it. Okay. What? What color for Benchy? And then we've got pop. Uh, top silver, bottom gray. And I don't know which one's silk because to me the gray actually. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, top silver, bottom gray. To me, to me the gray on the bottom actually looks more silky than than this guy. <clears throat> Shiny black, I think, shows prob. I don't like. I don't like test printing in black for checking details. I, I don't, I don't, I mean, maybe silk, you're saying shiny, so maybe that does um, show it a bit more, but generally speaking, I think gray does, some variant of gray does a really good job with gray. <laughs> okay, 85% are saying, I'm gonna leave this, this is gonna be like a two minute poll only, and then I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna do this. There's just stuff happening outside. I love printing, hey hacks. Oh, I did notice this. Uh, tripod said next to the lead screw for the bed. Interesting. You're saying the. Oh, so the four. Just to confirm, you're saying the four bolts that basically hold the lead screw bracket to the linear rail, or the or the bolts that are inside of that nut. Or there's a lot of damn it. Yeah, <laughs> I might need a photo. There's too many screws close by. I think I agree with that gray sentiment. I remember thinking I'd be the best villain because it's so neutral, but notice so many defects. Yeah, gray, gray typically does a great job of showing issues. All right, we're going with, we're going bottom gray. Bottom gray it is. Thank you for playing along. Okay, bottom it is. So let's do, let's do 50 millimeters of extrusion length uh, with a speed of 10 cubic meters a second, and let's retract. It's a brand new, oh, it's like a brand new spool. bed next to the hot okay okay gotcha so this basically there's six screws that doesn't that doesn't surprise me because that's sort of where the pivot point is where there should be some kind of a bearing is it actually loose right now hmm, i might i might check those uh, yeah it doesn't surprise me because when this thing pivots like that's the area where it's going to be putting some strain on so i can sort of see that being the case the, these these ones right that's what you're talking about 79% and 20%. <laughs> who's, who's the odd person out? Okay, so let's push this. Oops, push this through. Oops. Come on. Yeah, it's still a little bit. So it sense that there's filament. Let's do... Case light. Nice, our light's on. Cool, we're extruding. 
That little front light is pretty nice. It does a good job of really lighting up the area. Alrighty, let's let it rip. Reprint. So we'll run this last benchy, we'll take a look at it, and then we'll call it for today. And then again, next week we'll be doing Stealth Press. Stealth Press, followed by the following stream, which will be another printer kind of hang out like this, and then uh, Enderwire, and then start a probably a build after that. Does the bed flex? What do you mean? It's a flex plate, it's a thin, it's quite, uh, it's a quite thin DC uh, PCB bed heater. It's not silicone, so it's PCB bed heater. And then it's got, it's reinforced with these steel brackets. I think they're steel. Yeah, steel brackets. So it shouldn't really flex. I mean, I get, it's only held on, it's attached to that steel bed with four standoffs that look, they're soft. I don't know what the heck they are. I can't tell. Well, actually they don't feel quite as soft as I thought they were. I thought they were like a rubber TPU, but they actually feel like pretty hard. Pretty hard. That's not. No. Yeah, it's it's some kind of a polymer. For forty ninety nine dollars, it's great. Uh, this the SK one. Did you ever say what you got for the input shaper results? Yeah. So it, it recommended. I recommended like 13K. I can go back actually, it's still here. So, um, console. Okay. So for the X axis, uh, ZV, Max Excel 22K, MZV 17K. I think MZV is what it ended up going with. So it actually was higher than I thought. I thought it was 13K. Let me see. Um, I think MZV is what it set both of them as. Let's see. Yeah, so I did MZV for both. So MZV said 17K. Um, so the range was 22K to 13K, the lowest, with MZV being 17, and that's what it chose as its point and this one for y was less y was from 16 to 10 and it went with mzv which was 12k so 20k is high uh 20k is high especially for what it's recommending for y they're not they're not silicone standoffs i thought um i thought they were yeah i i, I tend to agree nice for <laughs> for the price i mean again i'm not saying this printer is perfect it's certainly not but like it's running Clipper, so you have freedom to do whatever you want. It's got linear rails. It's got bed tramming. Like it's, it's if nothing else, this seems like a very solid base platform. Um, yeah, not silicone standoffs. Again, I thought they were silicone or TPU because they certainly look like it, but they're not. They're rigid. So, um, oh, actually, what the hell? There's like, <laughs> there's like two. It's like a standoff within a standoff down here. Um, this one might be squishy. Okay, so there there is, let me show you guys, let me show you. I, we're here to look at things, not have me try to vocalize. Uh, I don't know how well you'll be able to see that. Oh, wait, that's, there we go. Okay, so if you're looking at that guy, I'm bring you guys up a little hair. There we go. So if you're looking at this guy, there's actually two standoffs. You have like an outer standoff, this is rigid. But then you've got an inner standoff that actually is what attaches to the bed. And I'm poking on this. This is squishy. I don't know that it's silicone. Um, it, it probably is. I mean, that seems to be what a lot of um, those standoffs are. I think their silicone is fairly thermally stable. Uh, but yeah, so rigid outer and squishy inner. I don't, I don't know why. Maybe to kind of contain it so that way it can't shift if it's tension down too hard. And then the bolts going from bed through it is a nylon lock nut. So it's not going to be moving around on you. So yeah, it's, it's got like two kind of two standoffs there. Why are we not printing? What's must home access first. Okay. Why well, can't like, I'm waiting for nothing. Uh, hey, Alan, super late. I hope everyone is doing well. Yeah, we're doing great. Actually, a, believe it or not, a pretty, pretty mellow stream. Like nothing really went wrong. 
Uh, and I mentioned it before, you'd think that like a printer unboxing stream would be pretty chill, but man, have I, have I proven that not to be the case in a lot of situations? I hope you're doing well too. We're gonna do, I, I baked, um, I, had a, I don't really bake, but I baked three cakes last night, like three bread pieces in six inch tins and then cut them off. And then I made the frosting today. So I'm making, uh, I just need to go put it all together and chop up some fresh fruit. And Jackson's gonna do a smash cake um, at, at uh, five o'clock or, oh. Yeah, five, so six o'clock our time, right? Sorry, I, I'm trying to think it in my head because we're calling my parents and Aaron's parents and they're on West Pacific versus Mountain. So I think I think I have three hours actually. Uh, acceleration is set to 20K. It is set to 20K. Uh, did you run the ADXL tuning with the fans running? That's a great question, I don't know. That's a great question in general, Dutch. Have you done testing? How, how big of a difference does it make versus running or not running? Yeah, acceleration. I don't know when it comes to the, you said with the profile. I don't know what the slicer profile is. Um, this is pre-sliced, so I really don't know. What the heck was that? You okay? Okay. And no one's hurt? Okay. Jackson either knocked over a bar stool or a kitchen chair. I just heard something, every time I hear something slamming, like, like slamming, like it's not a normal sound I hear. Um, let's see. There we go. Yeah, so this is what it's set in firmware, Delmar. Uh, velocity 800. Excel 20K, Excel to Decel 4000, Z Velocity 15, Z Excel 100, and square, uh, square Corner Velocity is set to 5. I, the DC bed is kind of a bummer. Oh, I need to hit print again, don't I? The DC bed's kind of a bummer because it's slower to heat. I've gotten sort of spoiled <laughs> with AC beds. Why are we not? Reprint. Clear file. I'm not sure what's going on when it comes to jobs. Print. There we go. It's working now. Uh, uh, that, I feel the result of every single review for every Two Trees product that has ever been made. I can just totally believe they dropped the ball not having nozzle based and preaching nonsense and lack of fan control. Yeah, again, I think the lack of fan control, I, I, I guess I can only give them so much of, so much leniency on that. It's, it's because they're not making the board hardware, but that's still not really an excuse because just because everyone else is white labeling um, maker base doesn't mean that they couldn't have gone with like big tree tack or something like that. something else or a different maker base board possibly. Currently on discount sales and on stock for 49. Yeah, they, they actually gave me nice, a, uh, a $50 off coupon code. It's in the description. So it should be, I think it's for, or actually maybe. I think it's 450 right now. If it's 499 on their website, I don't know if it's global or not. They didn't give me a whole, yeah. So it's 499 with the discount, you should be able to get it for 450. But I, the things I don't know is how long that price is good for, uh, what shipping costs are. They didn't give me a whole lot of info. It was pretty last minute as far as the, the discount aspect of it. I, I had the printer for probably a month now waiting for us to finish the underwire to unbox it. Um, but the coupon code, like literally, I think 48 hours, I got an email. Here's a code. And I'm like, cool. But there was there really wasn't much info. All right. It's pretty much at temp. But yeah, the calibration, <laughs> the Z offset was silly. Uh, you should, if you normally print with it on. Oh, wait, you're saying, you're saying the fans should be on if you normally print with your fans on. Yeah, okay, yeah, for PID tuning, I know definitely know that's the case. 
I goofed on that on uh, the V0.2 that I've been playing around with and it shows. <laughs> Every time it hits temp when the fans aren't on, you see the temp like climbing, it has to keep fighting it uh, because of that. I think, I think I had it fans off. I think I had fans, no, I had fans on 100%. You, you, I don't know, you want it like sort of in the middle, typically, like I usually do the fans, I think 50%. Uh, I'm doing well, crunch time, oh nice, crunch time at work. Daddy's anxious. <laughs> What about in the Slicer profile? I haven't I haven't uh, looked yet because I need to download the latest version of Prusa Slicer. I can find that out though. Actually, while it's doing this, let me download. Let me see here if I go. Prusa Slicer. Download for Windows. I'll let you know in a sec, Delmar. To be fair, would you trust two trees with AC beds? I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I like their startup, uh, their purge line's kind of cool. It's like three back and forth and a zigzag. Why is Nozzle's... Nozzle is too far away now. That's weird. That's really weird, actually. Why is Nozzle too far away? That was definitely saved. That was definitely saved to the... Um, that was saved to the firmware, so I don't know why that would be the case. We'll start it up again and see. I don't know if that's the probe thing, or maybe it didn't get saved, or I, I don't know if it's weird. Maybe the nozzle thing is due to the difference in that when you set the offset versus now when it's already heated up. Also, I think your chat might be behind a bit. Uh, from what I understand, you want to run the ringing tower to tune in your outer wall Excel. Okay. Yeah, before I adjust the Z offset again, I want to see if it's too far away a second time. It's also kind of weird. I can't tell. No, no, there's a screw holding it in place. No. Looks like it's some boogers in the nozzle during some homing leveling. Yeah, the booger shouldn't matter, though, because this is an inductive probe, so it's not actually leveling with the nozzle. It still looks too far away to me. Yeah, it's too far away. Weird. Okay, let me pause it. We'll do it one last time. I think I got it. It's just weird. I'm, I'm gonna, I'll try that a couple of times. If the, if the, um, It's going to definitely drive me crazy if the Z offset is is not consistent. Okay, cancel. Yep. One last time. Yeah, I wish I wish it, if it had a load cell on the tool head, it would be easier for me to be like, yeah. I, I wish it didn't have an inductive probe. It's probably, that is out of the hardware options on here, probably my biggest meh. <laughs> I think that if you keep it as an open form factor printer and don't enclose it, as long as it's a decent inductive probe, it's probably fine, but I'm just not, I don't, I just don't really like inductive probes. It's not my thing. Okay, download for Windows. It's 11 p.m. Uh, gotta go to sleep. How the rest of your day? Hey, thanks for hanging out, DJ. Have a great night. Sleep. Use your fingernail. It makes me cringe thinking about all of the posts in the fingernail that people are getting a little. 
I've, I feel like after 10 years, like I, I know, I know that you can get splinters from, why are we, what's going on here? Very confused. The adhesion was so good initially. Now I've got nozzle a little bit too close. So that could have been why it didn't stick. If it's too close, sometimes it pushes off. Is the hot end sock falling off? It's not falling off, but it's crooked. I need to fix it. After I put it, after I removed it, I, I guess I thought I put it back on correctly, but apparently, apparently not perfectly. Yeah, that does not look good. Two twenty. Everything looks right in that regard, but it's pretty like it's pretty like hell. Yeah, I'm gonna do a reboot and just see. I don't understand. <laughs> We've changed nothing. <laughs> what the heck? Now it's beeping. I don't love that beep. All right, force refresh, reconnect. All right, we're printing again. I, I have no idea. I, I don't know. We've all we do is swap a filament. The bed's at sixty C. Yeah, bed's, bed's plenty warm. This is exactly what my quality code is doing. What's the best to solve it? What, what do you mean? I enjoy it. And, no, I, I wonder if there's a way, let's see. What is, I wonder if the thing that says B-I-I-I -I -I is, is a beep. There's gotta be a way to disable the, the beep. So just spaghetti not forming a good first layer. Not forming a good first layer is usually an adhesion thing, almost always. Like, I mean, adhesion or nozzle offset not being correct. Not always, but almost always. It's too far away. So something I think, something I think that's happening. No, no, it did. No, it did, it did do a bed tram, didn't it? Before it printed. No, it did do a Z adjustment. It did do a Z adjustment. Yeah, it's pretty far away. But it did do a Z adjustment. Um, could it be that the mash? Let me see if it's loading the mash. Uh, do, 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 tune. Mash is 0.34, so it's loading the same mash. It's bizarre to me. Um, 
mesh is there. It did do its offset and it, and it made some slight tweaks, you know, fraction of a millimeter, one tenth of a millimeter. There's a Z offset. Strange. <clears throat> it looks like it's here. I don't, I mean, again, this could be the previous Z offset. I don't know if that's my Z offset. Let's see if I lower this. Let's do 50.5. Save restart. Is it loading the mesh in the G code? It, I, I would imagine it is if, if the firmware is pulling the mesh like this. Um, Load mesh. There's a G32 command to load bed mesh. Printer is not ready. I think it's conflicting. I wonder if some of it's a conflicting, uh, that's confliction between the screen. Let's do a firmware restart. Or restart clipper, actually. Printer is not ready. I might kill it and reboot it. Um, lower it by 0.5. Can't you do a manual job? Yeah, I can do a manual job set. You have to call the loading of the mesh explicitly now. Oh my God. Oh my, bruh. <laughs> That's why it's glossy. Dude. <laughs> this is the second time in the past. This is the second time in the past, probably 30 days that I've done this. Voxel PLA just came out with PTG probably like 60 to 90 days ago. And I've been using their PLA for probably a year and a half now. So mentally I'm not, I see Voxel PLA and I'm like, it's PLA. But the reason why it's glossy is not because it's a glossy PLA, it's because it's a PETG, and PETG is usually glossier. <laughs> oh my god. So that is that is why we're having adhesion issues. We're printing PETG at 220 and 60C. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. It's user error. I, I think it's the offset still seems wrong, but that is not that was not helping our case at all. That is exactly why it was printing like hell. Let's... Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna do one last thing here. I'm gonna kill the power. <laughs> it says PETG on it. Like it, it's no, it's there. Like, <laughs> let me see. It's it's not even small. Like it's dude, there's no excuse. Look at it. Like I mean, it's it's there. Like that. It's a big PETG. <laughs> I should have known. Like they don't make silks. <laughs> it's so funny. Oh my god! All right, let's let's reboot this. I, I want to. I wish I hadn't changed the Z offset because I kind of want to just see what the heck happens. But we'll we'll unload this, load PLA. I got to end the stream in like 15 minutes, but let's at least get it started. <laughs> okay. Let's do 220 on the hot end so we can get this out of here. I'm curious to see. I imagine. Okay, so it loaded loaded the mesh. I will check on the, uh, Phil, I'll check on the mesh once I get into the actual slicer profile for this, whether it has a load mesh, uh, default in the starting G code. 
Yeah, let me make sure. I have a feeling. If I go printer.cfg. Okay, so it did it did change my Z offset ever so slightly. I'm just gonna leave it as is at the 0.5 for right now. And then let's let's try to before I do anything else, let's just print. 50. I can't believe it. This is the second time. Like I, I just did this. I just did this a few weeks ago. At least you didn't ruin the PEI by printing at P yeah. Wait, I'm doing the wrong thing. I want to retract it. I'm extruding. <laughs> it's always user error. Just review the G32 macro. Yeah, that's a good call since it's... Okay, yeah, let's... Um... Let's get PLA loaded. <laughs> so we didn't actually have to have the vote because this is this is PLA, just, just to verify. PLA, so... <laughs> Every string, every single string, there has to be one thing, like a knee slapper. It's gotta be a knee slapper. Thank you to whoever in chat said that. It, I, I'm sure I would have figured it out, but I can almost guarantee it wouldn't have been during this stream. See, I think I'm gonna remove the beeper. I don't need to be beeped at. Um, okay, we're extruding. Install camp. Yeah, I will. I will end up doing... I've been meaning to do a video on it, but you don't need camp anymore. Um, I was talking to the creator of camp and variable meshing is now in Clipper uh, just by default. So if you're on the latest Clipper, you just put um, adaptive equals one in your G code uh, or in your starting or wherever you're gonna mesh and it will automatically do that. So let's, let's hit print. Cool, we're printing. So let's go under configuration. And let's go under, I don't know where the macros are. Pause, G29, G32. Yeah, so it is, yep, G32. It clears the previous one, it homes, and it loads the default. So we can just do here, I don't know, what, again, I don't know what version of Clipper it's on, but if we just go to, uh, I'll, I'll do a video on it, but let me see. Clipper, adaptive, mesh. Yeah. I just set this up on a printer in the last couple of days here. Uh, if we go, there we go, bed mesh. Let me go down to where did I see it? Here it is, adaptive meshes. So all you have to do is add, it has to have the same parameters. You have to have the exclude object module. So you do the include exclude object. You need to use a slicer that labels things, all the same parameters that you needed for camp. But all you have to do now is, uh, where is it? Clear bed mesh, no, uh, adaptive mesh. So there's a few parameters, but here we go. Adaptive. All you have to do is add adaptive equals one as a parameter and that's it. G32 and a Voron 2.4 is quad. Can't that like, gotcha. Cause you, again, it's just, I guess in Clipper, the way it works is it doesn't mean anything. You have to define what it means. All right, will this work? I don't know. Nozzle still looks a little too far. Yeah, it's definitely still too far. What gives, man? I, I just don't.
Okay, I dropped it another 0.3. All right, last one. We're not going to finish. I mean, I'll finish the print and post it, but I just want to get it going so we can see it working correctly on stream and then I'll kill it and post the, or I won't kill it, I'll end the stream and then we'll, uh, and then we will, um, I'll post the photo after. They will be okay if it's subject to high temperatures for too long. Uh, Wait for a full run out. It beeps like your house is burning. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, I don't like the beeper. I, I guess. Yeah, no, I, I don't like the beeper. I don't. There's no, I guess, this or that. I, I just don't like it. They will be okay. He said the high temperature would be long. If you expect a print run out, ASA would be replaced with parts and. Oh, that's that's a, that's um, Prusha's answer. Ask Prusha's support if the pet G parts. Keep up and oh, gotcha. Okay. Yep. Yeah, once I get the Z offset dialed in again and I save it and make sure it's actually saved by looking at the G, uh, the config file, I'm going to run quite a few prints on this and see that it sticks. If it doesn't, I got to figure out what the heck's going on. Okay, that's a little bit better. I still think we can go a bit closer. I'd still like to be closer than it is right now. I think it'll, I think it'll stick for this print. I don't know if it actually will because of how quick it's going to go in a second here. I, I think you don't have to desolder it, beef. But yeah, if if you uh, if there's no other way, then I very likely am going to desolder it. It's awful. I don't like beef. It's one thing if it was like a cute little jingle. Um, I wonder if there's a way. I wonder if there's a way in the. Um, I don't know. I wonder if there's a way in the config I can just quickly disable it. I tend to think there would be. All right. Well, we're extruding. Things are looking things are looking good now that we're printing PLA with PLA temps and not uh, PPG at PLA temps. Hmm. Again, whoever whoever saw that the spool said PETG, thank you. I certainly did not. <laughs> There's a baby step button. Yeah, no, I, I, I've been baby stepping it, Delmar. I, I, I dropped it down from the time this print started. So right now I dropped it down half of a millimeter. <laughs> I've been baby stepping it. It needs a little bit more too though. But just now that it's past the first layer, I don't see a point in lowering it into the previous layer. But once this print's done, I'll probably do it again. Hey, I can, uh, how do y'all, I uh, was stuck in meetings, so I missed the stream. No worries. We're, we're going to end it. We actually ran over like 20 minutes. I, I got to get going and finish up my son's birthday cake. Um, but it, we sort of had a funny ending. Things were working well. And then we decided we wanted to print this pinchy in gray to try to highlight the imperfections a bit more versus the initial um, polymaker filament I used. And things did what well, things went awry after that. And I think that at least at least 70 percent of it was my fault. Um, I didn't realize that the voxel PLA I grabbed was not was not voxel PLA, it was voxel PETG. So, I hope your readings went well, though. Uh, at Larry, did I miss something? Did I miss a message from Larry? I don't see, I don't see a message. But yeah, this is looking, this is looking pretty good as well. I think we're going to call it. I will post some photos. Um, I'll post some photos of this when it's done in the Discord which won't be very long from now, uh, but I'll post some photos a little bit later so that way we can see. Maybe I'll do a close-up of the Polymaker Benchy at like the same angles with this one so you can kind of see, you know, how much different it does or doesn't look with the two different colors. 
But, and then also next week when we do the stealth press, I'll update you because by then I'll, I'll have had a week of just playing around with this and printing with it. So I'll be able to let you guys know what the deal is with the Z offset. I don't, so I saved the Z offset. So I saved the Z offset from the screen. So it's entirely possible that, that value of 0.98 or whatever was in there wasn't the value wasn't the value that I had set from the screen. Maybe it didn't end up saving the firmware. I don't know. That might be worth testing a bit more. But I mean, once I set the Z offset, I shouldn't really have to adjust it ever. So if I have to, again, once the key thing I'm more interested in is once I set it, once I get it right again by dialing it in with fluid and I save it, that it maintains that value once I restart the printer. Because if it doesn't, that's an issue. I, I think it will. But it's a little bit funky that didn't do that already. So, Larry caught the PGG. Oh, Larry's one that caught it. Yes, Larry. Larry gets a sound effect. Uh, yeah, Dugan, and cheer, and cheer. Well, you gotta, thank you. <laughs> All right, I know that the non-standard screen would do this. Yeah, the issue with the non-standard clipper screen. So it's one thing if they use like the. Uh, rep wrap style or big tree tech you know the rotary style of the screen that it uses sort of it doesn't have its own firmware um or if they use clipper screen but all the other ones if i'm not mistaken are running their own firmware and so it definitely could be a communication thing between whatever firmware is running on the screen sending those values over to um like to the actual clipper host to update it so it very well could be that Again, not the end of the world, as long as it sticks when you do it in here, but annoying, yeah, and something that, if that is the case, should be updated. So, anyways, wish me luck, everybody. I am going to, again, attempt to finish up my son's birthday cake. I It's pretty much done. I just, I've got a bowl of the icing, which is just yogurt, maple syrup, and vanilla extract that I've got to, I've got to batter up the cake and then cut up a bunch of berries, but uh, I'm pretty excited because it's a smash cake, so he gets to destroy it and then open some open some birthday presents so thank you everybody for hanging out i uh i today was a smooth stream i told aaron before the stream started that today's just going to be like a pretty laid back unboxing and setup stream and then i paused and looked at her and said because i said that <laughs> something's gonna happen but knock on wood i mean everything seems to work i worked out pretty well um the SK-1 seems relatively solid from first first glance. I, I don't plan on doing a... I don't plan on doing a full review on this printer. Uh, so there probably won't be a dedicated video. But I will be doing some... I need to print out a ton of stuff for... For the Alex drawers, the Billy Bookshelves, and the Scatis pegboards. So that is something I'll be throwing just parts at this and any other printer that we end up unboxing. But yeah, if anyone has any questions as far as about this machine, feel free to ping me and I'm happy to happy to share more info as I get it. So, okay. Thank you again, everyone. Thanks for everyone hanging out. Congratulations to our school winner. Thank you to our uh, gifted subs, our uh, new members, or I guess our membership, gifted members and new members. And next week again, we're going to be doing the stealth press build and we're going to be giving away a stealth press with international shipping so uh definitely stay tuned for that i will try to post i will try to schedule that stream by sunday of this week so that way anyone that wants to be there has the chance to be there so awesome okay on that note take care everybody and i will catch you guys next time cheers bye where's the mouse there it is <laughs>